What is up, everybody? We are rolling audio here today on episode 55 of The Hotter Show. How are you doing? I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic today. Thank you so much for tuning in and clicking that play button on today's episode of the podcast in which I am going to sit down with one of the members of my uh, esteemed wrestling panel. And we're going to shoot the breeze about a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about SummerSlam. We're going to talk a little bit about um, recklessness in wrestling. Uh, And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the fans. The fans. uh, The the vocal minority of the fans. A certain part of the fans. uh, And and what they are doing to the product. And the negativity. And we cover a lot of ground. Um, This is a... uh, Another uh, longer podcast, um, so I hope you guys uh, do enjoy it. Um, really, really good fun chat. Um, I get to uh, hang out with my buddy again. We haven't uh, chatted wrestling in a while, so like I said, we covered a lot of ground. Um, I just want to say real quick, uh, as far as the um, the wrestling panel episodes um, with uh, myself, the heel Ryan Wood, and the gimmick Brandon Bowden... Um, you guys may not be hearing the three of us together for them uh, as much anymore. Um, unfortunately, uh, just because Brandon is now working nights, as I mentioned in the podcast. Um, so it is going to be a little trickier for us to record them, but uh, I'm going to try. But um, anytime there's any kind of a pay-per-view review uh, or anything like that, it's most likely going to be myself and Ryan possibly adding in a new member to the uh the Hotter Show Wrestling Panel, but if Brandon is ever around, you bet your gosh darn bottoms, that's right, gosh darn bottoms, um, that he is going to be involved somehow in the uh, in the wrestling. And that doesn't mean we won't see Brandon Bowden on the podcast anymore. You can be sure he will be on again. He is the producer, after all. Um, and uh, it's going to be good. But just, just want to say that for anyone who maybe was wondering why uh, why Brandon is not involved. It's nothing nothing going on or anything like that. That's just uh, that's what's going on. Now, before I roll into this podcast, I do want to say that this is a fully family-friendly episode of the podcast. There is one uh, BS bomb. Um, but it is in context, and I needed to drop it, <laughs> so it makes sense. Um, we, uh, we we definitely challenged ourselves this episode, myself and my guest, um, to, uh, to to really not uh, swear. Um, when I say swear, I mean the four letter words. We we still drop uh, you know drop some th- a three letter word and a five letter word and so on and so forth. But it is what it is. If that kind of thing offends you, I do apologize. But if you are listening to hear some wrestling talk. Most likely it doesn't offend you, <laughs> but it is what it is. I said I was going to try and make the show a little more family friendly, and this is definitely a family friendly episode. So, before I get into the podcast, I of course want to take a second to give a shout out to my man, Mr. Jason Reese, over at J Digital Arts. You guys better know by now if you need anything digital art related, whether you need t shirts designed up and merch and that kind of thing, you need a logo for your band, you need a logo for your business, you need anything at all like that guys Jason does all of it and he does it amazing um, if you've seen he's been posting some stuff lately uh, some work he does for the House of Hardcore um, which is Tommy Dreamer's wrestling promotion Tommy Dreamer of course the legendary ECW wrestler um, so that's really cool you guys saw all my logos and that kind of thing he did all those for me all my banners and everything he did my t-shirts and you guys saw probably the uh, the Segway City um meme that he actually did up for me really quick and really cool um i still i'm laughing about that and anytime i have meme ideas you can bet that jason will most likely be a part of it so definitely hit him up guys if you need anything at all like that done i mean the meme thing you know maybe not him up for that <laughs> but uh, i mean i'm sure he'd do it but uh either way you guys know how awesome Jason is and how great his stuff is. So you can find him on the web at www.jbirddigitalarts. That's J-A-Y-B-I-R-D, jbirddigitalarts.com. You can also find him on Facebook under the Jaybird Digital Arts handle and on Instagram under the Jaybird Digital Arts handle as well. If you want to check out anything Jason has done, you can find on Facebook. I always hashtag Jaybird Digital Arts. You click on that and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that Jason's done. So check him out. Give him a follow on Instagram. Give him a like on Facebook. Check out his website. Let him know that TJ sent you if you are going to be using his services of any kind. 
And with all that fun stuff out of the way, we're going to roll into this podcast here with one half of my esteemed panel of experts. Let's get into it. kitchen table folks at the kitchen mother loving table in the kitchen of harder show studios aka my basement apartment we got the mics going here we got the cold water on ice here and we're hanging out we're shooting the uh, shooting the breeze um and uh, I was hanging out with this individual to my my right here, and we were we were talking about a bunch of stuff. We were talking some wrestling, talking about SummerSlam actually a little bit, um, and a bunch of other stuff. And I just went, you know what? What the why, why the hell aren't we recording a podcast right now? And uh, so I decided we're going to turn on the microphones and just kind of see what happens. Um, and of course, this gentleman you guys know quite well, been on the podcast. Uh, uh, probably my like my second most recurring guest on the podcast. It's part of my wrestling panel. On the Hunter Show, even though uh, the wrestling panel might be going through a bit of a change, um, because uh, Mr. Brandon Bowden, the producer of the Hunter Show, um, has uh, now is going to be working nights, uh, and we record the podcast a lot at night. So, not sure what's going to happen there, but um, I, I will still definitely be covering wrestling. I might uh, do a lot of it on my own, but I'm sure you will see lots of this guy in the upcoming future. That's not a bad thing, because, ladies and gentlemen, he is the most ruthless individual you will ever meet both on Twitter and off Twitter. You can follow him on Twitter at the Heel RW. Ladies and gentlemen, the Heel Ryan Wood. You said I have a way cooler intro if I was allowed to play the song, but no, apparently you two will flag us for a full <coughs> time. Okay, okay, now listen, see, here, here, here's what keeps happening. So, you know you know when you came in on the um, uh, the Brother Nero yeah, podcast Brother we did? Nero. We, we, I, I literally, you know how I said I'm going to get flagged? Yep. I swear to you, that section of the podcast got flagged. Well, yeah. And I was like, but like... They don't want Bret Hart calling them in, saying he's going to write a book about how friggin' ruthless they are. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, they're reckless. YouTube is reckless. God, I love you, Bret, but I don't know why the hell you're getting picked on. It's a great song. It's a guitar riff. Anybody could write it. Screw Anybody could write it. Anyone could have written. Well, who are poking the people that friggin' make sure your podcasts are allowed on. And I'm just like, ah, turd burglars. Turd burglars, yes. Uh, this this is a uh, the family friendly a family friendly episode of the horror show. Yeah, I gotta watch um, my mouth. Yeah, we're we're gonna try and use very creative words here. We're gonna challenge ourselves. Actually, uh, yeah. it, it's been cool. Um, I mean, obviously, Anthony's uh, Anthony's uh, podcast. We're not fully family friendly. I mean, I mean, you know, if four letter words don't offend you, then it was they were pretty family friendly. I think, but uh, yeah. if the four letter words offend you, then uh, I guess they weren't very much. But. I'm rambling on here. Um, we were uh, we were shooting the breeze before we started recording here, but so much stuff. Um, lots been going on. Lots been going on, and uh, what I what I want to do here, folks, is we're not going to do a full review of SummerSlam, um, just because there there there's a lot of matches to cover. Well, can, can I? Do you mind if I talk about the the first couple of matches? By all means, take they, it away. They were matches. All right, let's go to the main. They stuff. were matches. The the only thing I'd like to say um, before we kind of get rolling. Um, is is American Alpha? Uh, American Alpha are great. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, and uh, R.I.P. to the Dudley Boys in WWE. Yeah, that was a uh, that's heartbreaking. That that's heartbreaking. Um, I, I think it's a little silly the fact that they're leaving again, having not really done much. Like I I, I think that's why. They're probably like, it's like, yo, are we getting the belts anytime soon? And they were like, well, no. You had your run, boys. You, But I'm glad they left before they became jobbers. They yeah. have so much hot tag teams coming in. The, the Dudley boys are... I love old school. You know Oh, that. so do I, yeah. And they're not needed anymore. And that's heartbreaking yeah. to say because it's the freaking the most decorated tag team almost in history. Well, I see. I still think there's, there's use for teams like the Dudley boys in the active roster, but it's... They have to be used right. And I, I just... I, I think... We'll probably see them back in TNA. Yeah, I won't be surprised if that happens, and that kind of makes me sad because I don't want them to end their careers in TNA. No one should have to. <clears throat> yeah, but if you wonder what we're talking about at SummerSlam, guys, the Dudley Boys unfortunately 
heartbreakingly lost their match. And on Raw, I don't know if it was a full announcement, but it's basically they're gone. Okay, they're done. Yeah, no, it's official. They're done. Okay. Um, <laughs> they're all, they're more done than Ryback. Let's put it that way. Holy crap. Over. Dropping the Rye bomb over here. Well, he wasn't on the kickoff <laughs> match. So that must he, he, he <laughs> left on the... He left the business. Uh, so who's the new uh, pre-show stopper? I get. It's, it's I feel. Tra- I feel like it's going to be like Sami Zayn. Like I feel like he's destined to be on the pre-show forever. If Sami Zayn's not put in any storylines, that's where he's going to be. They're going to put him in a nice kickoff match. Just have a good match. Get the crowd going. But if you if he has no storylines, he's a guy. Him, yeah. him and Neville actually that yeah. kickoff tag match. I'm like, I mean, still a good match, yeah. but just we're not making fun of them. They're not like, oh, they're bad. That's why they're on the kickoff. It's like, no, if they don't have storylines, they're the next best guys. They're just yeah. guys that are just going to go in a generic match and make it look good. Exactly, exactly. But um, <clears throat> the rest of the matches, they were they were what they were. Um, I did really enjoy the Jericho. Jericho and uh, Enzo Mori big cash match, but we're we're just uh, it was a good match. Not much to say about it, really. No, it's the fact that the Canadians beat the Americans yes. in Brooklyn. That was pretty cool, actually. The fact that they won, Jesus, that was cool. But um, the first match we're going to talk about, um, kind of a little in depth here, and we're definitely going to get lead off on a point, um, something that we would talk about, and something that is a recurring theme in the WWE right now. Um, but uh, the match we're going to talk about is, of course, the women's championship match. Between Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. First things first. Um, the match was what it was. I mean, it it, it was a good match. Um, I think both of them put in a lot of great work. I was surprised to see Charlotte dethrone Sasha. I'm sure there's a reason. Yeah, there's got to be. Sasha, they built her up for so long. Her and Becky Lynch at one point in time yeah. to be champions. Becky fell off a little bit. And so it was destined Sasha was going to be champion. For to have your your title reign start on Raw and be lost the very next pay per view, that that does kind of suck. Like I I feel a little bad for her, the fact that she had to kind of go through that. But um, we know that's the number one. She's the number one contender. She has to be. She gets her rematch clause. So hopefully the WWE knows that. Hey, let's get another great match out of Sasha before we see the future booking, which we now know from Raw. Our the beloved Bailey is yes. here. She's a part of the main She's roster. She's finally after. I think it was a little silly the fact that they didn't just debut her at. Um, oh my god, what was the last pay per view? Um, I feel like a, Oh my god. Oh god. Oh my. Oh, Battleground. Battleground. When she yeah. came out, uh, I kind of feel like that should have been her debut on a paper because that was a really cool moment. Even if the fans didn't really get it. That was like like the Raw moment was cool. Don't get me wrong, but just and she beat Dana. Yeah. It was Dana Brooke. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, that's a good. It gives not not a, a foot in the door necessarily to getting at Charlotte, but hey, it's yeah. like I beat your protege. The minute you beat either Sasha or you lose to Sasha, I'm going for that belt regardless. Exactly. So I, that's why I think Charlotte's gonna. And this is future booking. This is what we're gonna be talking about. Not only SummerSlam, but future. My prediction for the whole thing. Charlotte won to give a heel a title moment or title run yes. for Bailey to run because you don't want Nia Jax coming up. I yeah. thought originally that's who it was going to be, but no one wants it. And even I started to realize that no one wants Nia Jax in that picture yet. She's not. She's not there yet. No. Um, but think of the moment when uh, you know Bailey dethroned Charlotte. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be a big moment. Bailey is an amazing performer. She's someone that young girls can actually genuinely look up to, and she loves that role. And just she's going to be great. Can we talk dream match? Can we talk in the future? Absolutely. I want to see WrestleMania. I know this is a long time. I want to see the four horsewomen go at it. The four so people that kicked off this revolution. Fatal four way. The real four people who got this four way. Yeah. Not Nikki Bella or Paige. With all due respect to Nikki Bella and Paige. Yep. I hey Paige. Uh, you know, don't don't smoke drugs, kids. That's how you get suspended. But. <laughs> Be- Becky. Shots fired by the heel Ryan Wood. Oh, I mean, it probably wasn't her fellow. I bet you Del Rio yeah. Forster. Oh, come on. Now, see, I would really like to know what happened there. Oh, Because uh, I, f- I feel like... They, they really announced it, eh? Did they seriously? Eva Marie and Del Rio were doing drugs and fooling around with each other. Paige came in and was like, what the hell? And Del Rio's like, ah, oh, come on, girl. It's cool. And then she got... She's young. She got peer <laughs> oh pressure. <God>. Let me <laughs> be serious for a second. I'm like, did they actually like, you know, yes, uh, Alberto Del Rio and Paige were doing this. I'm like, really? Because I feel, I feel like they probably did it on purpose. Because, I mean, come on. Her They're, career went down the crapper. I hate... And I hate saying that. But, like, how stupid do you think WWE is? Yeah. Like... 
oh, it just so happens that Del Rio and Page get split up in the brand split, and they're really just not happy about that. It's well known he's not happy about that. I'm sure Page isn't either. Page hasn't done anything, to my knowledge, unless I missed her. Uh, she's getting. She got a lot, of, a lot of trouble with some of her. Um, I'm trying to remember what she did. It was backstage, either coaching or going through NXT or stuff. But I remember hearing a couple stories. Her getting pulled aside by Road Dog. I know at live events, she's been getting in a little bit of trouble, getting yeah. mouthy, getting. I think it's. I don't know because I can't spec that. I didn't read too much into it um, because everybody will have their own opinions. Maybe it just got to her head. Maybe she thought she was higher up. But going back to where we started. The Divas Revolution didn't start with her. It started with the four people I want to see in the future come together. Charlotte, Bailey, Sasha, and Becky Lynch. And personally, yes. when that match happens, I want to see Charlotte holding the belt. I do too, and I, I want to see her get dethroned by like someone her, like Bailey. Yeah, or, one of her old friends. Like, and I want to see them like hug after the match and just make it this big moment. Yeah, <clears throat> where they finally like, you know what, okay, we're, we're here together. You bested me. Yeah, and in, in, in that match, I, I do want to see Bailey win only because i'm like her as the women's champion i think is just literally a license to print money but also think of it as this way your women's champion is going to be the kind of person who likes things like make a wishes and stuff like that mm-hmm. she is going to literally live for that like john cena oh yeah she's going to be they said the female john cena in that respect as far as i'm concerned well a crowd a crowd please remember we just we talked about wrestlemania let's let's, th- let's talk about two pay-per-views down mm-hmm. the line where for the women's division, we're probably going to see Charlotte versus Bailey, and yeah, oh and, probably. And that moment, she's going to be that person to fill that role. She's going to be the big role model for these young girls. Oh yeah, Sasha, Becky, Natalia, um, Charlotte. I can go on and name them all, but they're great. But as a poster person for yeah. the WWE, I think Bailey really fits that image. She uh, does. She's the Trish Stratus of this generation, I'd say. In a sense where Stratus was really great with the fans, and I think Bailey's gonna, on top of her already great in ring skills, that's just just what's gonna happen. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Um, but kind kind of kind of getting back to the um, the match, there was a point in the match, and, and you're gonna hear us talk about this a lot in the podcast. There's a point in the match um, where uh, Sasha was up on the turnbuckle on the top rope, and uh, Charlotte came up. <clears throat> excuse me. Charlotte came up, and I, I don't know what the hell she was going for. It looked like she was just trying to drop her on the top rope. Okay. Oh, the si- the sidewalk yes. slam, kind of like a sidewalk slam kind of deal. But like she jumped off, and yeah. like it was a weird sidewalk slam. And I guess from what I just could tell, Sasha just didn't extend her legs enough, and she fell. Like she didn't catch the rope. She fell. And twisted and landed basically on the back of her neck. Yeah. And um, was that, as the internet marks say, a major botskis? Oh, God. Sure. Okay, yes. Oh, look at that botch. Nah, nah, nah. I'm more talented than they are. (laughs) Shut shut up. Yeah. But uh, the the point is, things like that happen. Yep, it's a part of the business. Get over it. It's not necessarily anyone's fault. But was that move reckless? Now, for kids, there's a, there's a big uh, where he kind of paused on the word reckless. I think it was one of the worst words you can think of. The F word, the C word, the N word. If you don't know what they are, ask your friends, ask your family. I'm sure someone will tell you. Think of some horrible words you can say to a human being. In the wrestling business, reckless is up there. You are insulting their profession. Yes. You're insulting their skill set, who they are as a wrestler. So throwing that term out, is it's a big call out. You're really, really commenting on someone harshly. And that's, that's the theme of the night we saw. We saw a lot of potential reckless moments. Charlotte really kicking off with that move because there was a lot of spots in that match. Good for the Divas, or I can't say the Divas division, but the women's division. Good for them. It's all about equality. They deserve Absolutely. It. But they can't be pulling some of the spots there because they don't need to go above and beyond to the mm-hmm. point they're going to hurt somebody. Where Charlotte had, I think, two or three moments where people cringe thinking, oh my God, that was huge, but also, holy, Sasha could have died. And this thing is like, um, w- women can do any crazy high spots they want. Yep, we saw that. I, my whole thing, and you guys have heard me say this before, safety 
in wrestling for me is a big deal. When I see a move and I go, wow, that looks amazing and it's safe. When I see certain high spots um, and I go, God, yeah, that looked great, but did they need to do that? Well, can we talk about one of the most classic ones in history? The Hell in a Cell between Mankind yes. and Undertaker, where that spot did define a man's career. Yes. But that almost that spot almost killed a man. Whether you know it or not, yeah. Mankind being tossed off a cell could have killed him. When does... My, I guess my whole thing is... In this day and age right now in the WWE where there's injuries left, right, and center, someone like Finn Balor, we'll get to that in a little bit, but who is now out for possibly six months, possibly even longer. It depends, right? Hideo, I think, had the same injury. He was out for over a year. Yeah. But I think that was some other stuff as well. But um, when does it become... When does, I guess my whole thing is when is enough when is enough enough yeah. that spot yeah it, it, it looked great and it was devastating and they built the match around it and the commentators did an amazing job more Ronaldo oh my god Sasha banks hit that and he's explaining to the audience what just happened yeah she's injured yeah and she this, sold it like mm-hmm. a champion she but at the same time I think there was definitely some selling happening in there, but I think, I mean, she had to have been in pain. Oh, yeah, she's There's no way that didn't hurt her. Um, and the ref, you know, got a little excited. You know, he threw the X up right away, but like it was off camera. Yeah. He you could tell he was going to, I'm like, it. he's going to throw the X up and he did and they were off camera. So he probably got the buzz like, we're not ending the match. She's fine. Mm-hmm. And then like at first I was like, she's actually hurt. And then you saw Charlotte grab us. I'm like, okay, she's, she's okay. But, you know, they played that match off that, oh, no, they now her she has this injury and now her neck is injured. No, what is she doing to her back? Oh, my good Lord. Bah. So, like, they built around it really well, and the commentators did their job perfectly. But I, I guess just reckless moves in wrestling can, cost, that, can cost us a champion. That's all. That's it. Like, I just – I love a good high spot. Don't get me wrong, but – when does when does it become to a point where, where fans basically now a lot of fans expect it? Yeah, almost every match they go. Oh, how is Finn Balor injured? All he did was get thrown into a guardrail. What a pussy! And I'm like, are you joking? Have you ever taken that maneuver? Well, that correct me if I'm wrong. Was it the turnbuckle power? It bomb? was the buckle bomb. Yeah, but it wasn't on the guardrail. It was on the buck. Uh, no, it was. Uh, it when it happened, it was on like the. Guardrail. It was on oh, the outside. Was that spot. I thought it was, it was that spot. Bomb. No, no, it was okay. it. What? Well, well, it was the buckle bomb. Yeah, yeah. But it was on the outside because literally that. Well, we'll we'll get to that uh, on, in the Finn Balor Seth Rollins match. We'll get to that. But I, I guess the kind of the point we're trying to make here, folks, is it was a great match that I think kind of didn't get ruined by that moment, but it was a scary moment. Yep, they put a lot of tension on that match. Where it's like, oh, is Sasha going to be maybe out for a yeah. week? Does she have to take a night off just to? rest up where hey and that's and that division because they had to split the women division up Mm -hmm. you don't want injuries we can't afford for someone like sasha to go down no and it's not an insult to this women's uh, women's competitor naomi gets hurt it sucks not a huge deal yeah you lose becky lynch sasha charlotte one of the basically if you lose one of the four horsewomen it stings oh it hurts it stings big time so basically just I, i would love to see Curls, be careful. <laughs> yeah, just just every wrestler, be careful. I'm worried about everyone. Uh, like I care more about puppies than I do. You know, God, pythons. Come on, <laughs> seriously. I'm just saying. It just you just you just got to be a sexist little bugger over here, don't you? No, no. Um, yeah, you, you, I care about everybody because even a guy that many people won't. Maybe I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. Someone like Gold does. He's not really a big spotlight guy. Mm-hmm. But the WWE can't afford characters like that even getting hurt. Anybody getting hurt, it's a potential storyline out the window. Yes. You can't have that in this kind of business. Someone like Neville, when he got hurt, like, was he really doing a whole, whole lot? No. But when he got hurt, I mean, you they felt, felt it. it. And that was, I mean, you look at the, uh, that moment when he got hurt, and you look at how even someone like Jericho reacted. Yeah. Just, he's hurt. He's hurt. And then, you know, ref the skull flies, oh, no, I'm the asshole. Like, it's just... It's so, uh, I love that. I love that. Like, that just made me laugh. And then they played it off like it was a work. And I'm like, are you joking? Call, like, and it's then I, I think um, it was little Nate, uh, Charles Robinson, I think. Yeah. 
Um, and he came on Jericho's podcast like the next night and they played it off like, oh yeah, he was going to be on the podcast. I'm like, sure he was. Like, yeah. come on. And like, he said to him, oh, you know, I wasn't actually mad at you. And Charles Robinson had like the snarkiest response. It was so great. He's just like, Chris, I've seen you working on that guy different actor. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. But hey, that's how serious these guys yeah. take injuries. They don't Absolutely. want their brothers getting hurt or sisters for that matter. And I apologize. There's a little bit of segue city in there. Um, nah. But uh, segueing city back into what I was talking about. <laughs> Lots of segues over there. Yeah. Um, Let's get back on the en route to the SummerSlam yes, Highway. Yes, the SummerSlam Highway here. We stopped off in uh, in, uh, in, 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 in Jerichoville. Uh, Jericho. Womensville. Yeah, yeah old Womensville. You, you, you're the Sponsored worst. Sponsored by Chris Jericho. <laughs> well, because they are. The, some of them are still divas in my opinion. I think I think it just, like, for someone like you, like, like I've, I started watching the product when it was, they were women. Well, so did I. I watched I guess, it yeah, so did you Sonny too, yeah. was still around. Sable was mm-hmm. just coming into the business. And if you don't know who they are, that's... Bah, ruin the business. Bah, bah, ruin the business. Kill the business. Well, yeah. Excuse me. Well, mm-hmm. of course they did. They slept around. <laughs> the Bork Laser. <laughs> we'll get into him. Don't worry. <laughs> Bork Laser. <laughs> now, Bork Laser. No, Bill Lesnar, his Canadian brother. Oh, God. So, it, yeah. Like... That's, hey, that's I, I Good job, know. women. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, guys, at the end of the day, end of the day it was a great match. Um... Would like to see maybe the the rec- not recklessness. Not saying that sh- that Charlotte or Sasha are reckless. Just I would like to see maybe some of the heat, so to speak. Just maybe turn just a little bit. No more turnbuckle, top rope, side walk slams and power bombs. Let's just call. Let's just calm down. Slam them on the damn mat. Mm-hmm. Hit a moon salt or something. That's all you need. So then let's. Do you mind if I introduce the next match? Because this to me was one of the most safest matches yes and I don't want to call it boring but it was safe and it was the intercontinental title between the the champion the Miz going against Apollo Crews I thought his name was Apollo Creed uh, same thing they're both horrible <laughs> and why I'm calling them horrible he's got really no personality and they set this match up with very little promos very little build up it was just your classic number one contender walks into the building ready to fight the champion and all I gotta say about the match Right guy won. Miss retains yep. his title, and I didn't really care about the match. It was just like, eh. Yeah, I mean, I, I've loved the Miz perfect, with his new yeah. thing. Uh, with Maurice by his side is perfect. Yeah, um, the best valets. We've she seen looked the part time. that night, too. Yeah. She looked like, you know. A, Sexy as yeah. hell. Um, if you don't know where she's from, she's from Canada, people. Yeah. We produce that. You're welcome. The Canadian girls are good looking. Um did, did you see the Mrs. Uh, uh, as we record this, it is Wednesday evening, um, so SmackDown and all kind of stuff has happened. Um, His little thing with Daniel Bryan. Did you see that? I haven't seen that yet. Um, it, I don't. Let's put it this way: if it was a work, it was such good acting. I'm not sure. I there could be some backstage That's stuff we, that we may find out that Daniel Bryan got pissed off and they just kind of said, "Hey, you know, as extra thing, walk off." I wouldn't doubt Daniel was getting a little ticked off a little, like Probably. just a bit. I mean, Miz, play, and for all we know, Miz got heated up himself. I watched enough of it where I'm like, holy, I can't tell if this is this is entertainment and that's or real. Exactly. I mean, the Miz is that good. Oh yeah. If you say otherwise, I mean, tell me a better heel and I'll laugh in your face. Yeah, literally right now. Aside from maybe Kevin Owens comes close, but he's the yeah. guy you don't just. He, you, he's someone see, the thing is, is you too. love like fans. Like he comes out, he gets cheered. Yeah. AJ comes out, he gets cheered. The Miz comes out, and he, he gets booed. Him. The club comes out, they get booed. Uh, they get cheered. Yeah. So like you know, the Miz is one of the only guys right now. He gets booed when he comes out. Yeah. Uh, or Roman Reigns, you know, big heel. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, but, he's a great heel. <laughs> Because the fans are too stupid to know what a face is. Yeah. We'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll talk about oh, that. He's um, coming up next. Don't worry, but. That uh, title match, safe. It had its spots, but you know it was a a decent intercontinental title defense at a pay per view. Absolutely, um, and I mean, don't really have much to add. Like, just the Miz definitely has brought in something cool to, with the Intercontinental Championship. Um, I hope they don't mess with that title. Well, who who do you want as the number one contender? I know they're they're probably backstage hinting who they want, but mm-hmm. as as a viewer, to be honest. I kind of wish Dolph Ziggler wasn't in that title hunt for the WWE. Yeah. He was pushed to the Intercontinental. I would have loved to see Dolph and Miz go at it. Whether Dolph went a little heelish versus the full heel of Miz, I don't care if people are like, can't have heel versus heel, whatever. Those two on the mic cutting promos on each other in ring abilities, I would have liked it. 
That's that's what Absolutely. I want to see out of this uh, this intercontinental title hunt now because Apollo Crude, Apollo Creed, Apollo Mission, whatever your name is, you're talented, but you still got to have some storyline that wasn't there. So yeah, future next pay per view which is Backlash. Yep, yeah, I think so. yeah, Backlash. I want to see yeah, I want to see Dolphin uh, Miss. Be interesting. Um, I don't know who I want. I, I I at this point I basically. It doesn't matter who it is because the Miz is going to work great with them. Yep. Um, and that's pretty much that match. Uh, I don't really have much else to add on it. Good safe match. Good yeah. safe match. Um, now the next match. <laughs> if I think it was the pure aggression match, which wasn't even a match. Oh no no that was later. Oh, oh that yeah, was later. Yeah, yeah. This was uh, the match of the night for sure. Nothing even touched this match. Uh, and anyone who disagrees with me, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Oh God. I'm Both wrong. men. Literally put in the work. And that was AJ Styles versus John Cena. Now, you have John Cena come out. He's a guy who he's part-time now, which he can be part-time as much as he damn well wants. He's worked his butt off. You call him part-time still? He's He's got full-time. Oh, I, basically because they're saying, like they basically said, he's like, yeah, he's, he's a part-time performer now. Wow. But like, to me. He's got full-time hours. Yeah, um, I guess basically just they're not gonna like do as as much with him. No. I think they're gonna start slowly quieting him down. No. Maybe give him one more round with the title eventually, and then maybe send him off into the sunset. But whatever. Um, the John Cena that we saw that was big match John. That was hey, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Canadian destroyer because I can and to prove a point. Mm-hmm. Hey AJ, what's that move you do? What is that? Oh, the Styles Clash? Yeah. I'm going to take it like a champ. Why would I protect myself? Did you see how he took that second Styles Clash? Yeah, he kind of... Just turned his head. Just bam! I was like, oh, damn. John, that wasn't unnecessary. We knew it. We we knew it hurt. (laughs) Yeah, like, I I know you're not a big fan of the Styles Clash. As a finisher, no. But, I mean, it's a move you can screw up and you Absolutely. can hurt someone with. So, I mean, hey, it, it's got the potential of being devastating, but I don't think it's a real fish finisher. Yeah. And in um, the words of Brandon, I digress. In the words of Brandon, I digress. Yeah, of course, uh, the gimmick Brandon Bowden is not here today, the producer of show. No, but I own royalties now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to pay him now. Um, I, I had half of mine to just call him and be like, yo, like blah, 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 blah. But uh, uh, because he is at work, uh, yeah. I cannot do that or else I totally would. Have another call in by Mr. Brandon Bowden. Um, so he can tell you that John Cena should have won the match. He, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we all know AJ Styles didn't need the win. Do I have to be real about this match? As yes. much as I came into this match thinking John needs to win. I want John to get the push. AJ doesn't need it. It's AJ Styles. Until the match was over, and I'm like, AJ needed that win. It is super See, what, Cena. what I said earlier was a work. AJ needed that win. Oh, I know. AJ Styles should have win. AJ Styles won, and he won clean on John Cena. What a Are f- you kidding me? Amazing. One of the best phenomenal forearms yes. I've seen in a long time. Oh, my Jesus. good he, Lord. I thought he actually connected with his face just to knock him out just for a point. Like, just... And you know that John was happy to do it. Yep. Um, he played it off so well, yeah. which added to the emotion of that match. John, it looked like when he put never give up, looked like he either he, he put was, it down and yeah. just, yeah, he was just kind of like, what was the greatest next time was AJ wearing the bandit thing on his head. Yeah. And Good just man. this whole thing of AJ, oh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to beat up John Cena. It's like, and he did. He beat up John Cena. Right, he called like, it. He's almost like, he's like being a little bully now. And it's funny. Like, I don't, I don't like the whole bully gimmicks because like, WWE's anti-bully and all that kind of things. So, like I kind of think it's a little silly. Well, they can but, be stupid. Look at how Gallows and Anderson were, and uh, the whole club trying to bully. Yeah, Cena that. Oh like, my, that on, was guys. just. We'll get to them in a minute, but um, we'll get to the Good Brothers in a minute. But uh, AJ looked amazing in that match. He looked phenomenal. Yeah, he sure did. Stop for uh, for the pause there. Slight pause. A slight pause to make you guys understand that that was a phenomenal pun. <laughs> and realize, kids, there is a title defense going to happen at Backlash, and you better believe AJ's going for that belt. He better. After that if, performance? I'm telling you, if AJ Styles by the end of this year is not some kind of a champion, I don't care what it is at this point, I'm going to be very disappointed. Well, who's your number one contender? John Cena just lost to AJ, so in the rankings... It's not John. He's gone. He's down. Randy Orton did lose to Brock Lesnar. Yeah, we'll so I'm first I'm concerned, he's down. 
Bray Wyatt to me is the next guy in line. Yeah, but he hasn't done. And that's the thing. He's the next big yeah. powerhouse, but AJ has now rose above him. So if yeah. you want to do as far a as I'm, one yeah. contendership match, maybe, but AJ to me, next week on SmackDown, he should just come out and be like, hey, uh, Dean, you big goofy butthole, I'm going for your title. And guess what? I would have been up Dean Ambrose. Well, man, that's pretty cool if you want to come for my title. I'm kind of a big goofy wanker, but if you want to have it, we could like totally hang out with our jean it's shirts just, on. Just some, Dean some, Ambrose, man, how's it going? I'm kind strong, of like that surfer guy. How you doing? Strong words from the heel Ryan Wood over here. We'll we'll get to Mr. Ambrose in a moment. I have uh, a hot girlfriend, but I'm a loser. How's it going? He isn't. He has. He's not dating Renee Young. Yeah, it's all work. They don't even know each other that well. Did you see them on Unfiltered? Like they don't even know each other. Nah, man. She couldn't even get in my tank top. You know what I'm saying? Jean jackets. What's up, Dean Ambrose? <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Um, oh, just wait till we get into his match. By the end of the day, guys. It just Styles versus John Cena. It, I, I'm as far as I'm concerned, it definitely wasn't the match of the night. It did get the most time out of anything on the uh, on the night as well. But I mean. The pay per view did feel a little long for me at moments, but that match made it worth it. That match made it worth it. Yeah, I don't think a pay per view should ever go that long ever again. Yeah, uh, three hours make it worth. It's a long time because there's a couple of matches I'm reading. Like we have the card, we've seen it, we've watched it. Is but there's matches, matches we're skipping. Sense? Yeah, like and that sucks. That they, especially someone like someone like say like an American Alpha. I love American Alpha, but I have like I just don't really have one, like haven't really talked they about that match. Not been on SummerSlam. Yeah, half those teams shouldn't have been like this. You could have cut down at least 40 minutes with yeah. some of the crap they had. Oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, then the day, guys, it was a great match. Um, very, very much uh, enjoyed that matchup. And it's my match of the night. Oh, um, it's my match of the night. We, we aren't doing the ratings or any of that kind of BS this time around. Uh, maybe next time. But because, uh, like I said, we're kind of just shooting the breeze on this here about SummerSlam and some other stuff. But another match that th- there was no crazy moments. It was It was... There were some cool moments, but it was still it was still a good solid yeah. just wrestling match. Yeah, that's all. I yeah, you from, said it. That's that. Um, so the next match we're going to talk about is uh, <laughs> pure ruthless aggression. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a match; it was just I'm going to go. Well, beat not yet. Crap. No, we got to do it. Cause okay, we'll just talk about this match now. Because SummerSlam's biggest mistake, and if I have to give a whole critique, because I'm going to do it now, because why we did a title or what. I'm losing train of thought because I was. You said it yourself too. Why the heck were the championship matches yeah. not at the end? That Seth just Rollins and Finn me. Balor, Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler were before. Well, the United or one of them was before the United States Championship, which they was were, Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. They were both before Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton, and they're going to be like, "Oh, this is how you got to do it. You got to set up the matches, get the hype." For the beginning of time since wrestling started, the main events are your major titles. Yes. So that felt very weird that and Dolphin... it should stay Dean, that way. Yeah. Dolphin Dean should not have been your mid-match of the, uh, the whole thing. That's ridiculous. It's weird. Yeah. It's a little uh, It's a little weird. So that's why I want to go into the Ruthless Aggression United States title fight, mm-hmm. not match. Yes. That was that was a fight. <laughs> because it wasn't a sanctioned Roman match at all. Roman looked brutal. <laughs> oh, he, if I thought at first this is the time they're going to make him a face. Mm-hmm. Ruthless... Or, Rusev is such a great heel. He's a great United States champion. Yeah, belt. absolutely. He's he he is doing what he needs to do with that belt. And Roman just after Rusev tried to go on the attack, and Roman responds by just beating the crap out of him before the bell rings, and then there was no match. No, it was awesome that way. Rusev looked a little hurt, and Roman came back out after he walked out and speared him into oblivion. You that want to talk about spear. spear. You want to watch someone get speared? Yeah. Watch Roman Reigns spear Rusev at SummerSlam 2016. Yeah, because to me, Roman, you're good at the spear, but Rusev made that look good. Because Rusev, Rusev jumped that, into that it slight jump into it and just, it looked oh amazing. Oh, I believe my Rusev Lord. was actually hurt after that. Yeah, I, I'm sure that didn't, I'm sure that tickled. Yeah, and that's not in, we're, we're going back to our um, reckless talk. That that almost borderline because not I wouldn't call it reckless, but I'm like Rusev. You made, at the same time it's you know you flat put that, back bump right. Yeah, and he put that too much in that spear. I'm like, oh Rusev, why are you trying to injure yourself? It's like you know he's just like hey Roman. My like, wife is watching. I must look good. Oh spear, it hurt. Good job. <laughs> I hurt. hug you backstage. I hug you backstage. <laughs> um, I think at this point, like Roman's basically he, he's at that point now where, like. All the guys probably either love him or absolutely hate him. 
Oh yeah, and a majority I bet you don't like him. Yeah, they probably he just think has that. Yeah, he's the Samoan that got in because of his family. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like he has this attitude that's just like, you know, and he's kind of playing that character more now. And mm-hmm. is Roman Reigns going to be United States champion in the future? I see it. Ha- I see it happening only because I see him dethroning Rusev at this point. Yeah. So I feel like that's where because the- then Rusev's going to come back and be like, oh. Oh, well, we're going to do an unsanctioned no disqualifications match or whatever. And then Roman's going to just whip his butt and that's going to be the end of it. Or they make him lose to punish him even further. Who knows? Fair enough. I mean, he did say online that he was being punished, um, which is why the the Usos were drafted because he was being punished for his suspension. Yeah. Which is interesting. I I, I don't see... It's a bold statement. Yeah. I think that's kind uh, kind of funny that he said that. But I digress. Um, royalties. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, we just might as well have just a royalties thing every time we say. So right now we just, both we both owe Brandon like a dollar. Yeah, he's he's making yeah. money. Like in total, we owe him a dollar, yeah. fifty cents per. I digress, and that one doesn't Pardon count. Me. But that Matt, as, as much as that fight was interesting, um, leading into definitely the most. Uh, Unique matchup of the evening. It's a good way of saying it after you're yawning. Yes, uh, excuse <laughs> oh, me, folks. So I'm, a, oh, I'm a little, a little <laughs> tired today. Had a long day. Um, tired of wrestling. Tired t- of you people. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm never tired of wrestling or the harder show. I live for the harder show. I'm getting tired of wrestling fans in Philadelphia and in New York. Yeah, I'm too. Some of the dumbest people I've ever met. And I'll, I'll say it right out loud. You guys don't know how to chant. Yeah. The Heath Slater chant, funny. Um, I was really for it. And then he started chanting CM Punk. Why? Why? It, okay, listen. He's not okay. on the roster, okay. boys. He's not okay. coming out. Listen to me, everybody in the world right now. <laughs> Set him off. I now, I, I have no problem with CM Punk anymore. I really don't. Um, I, I despised him for a long time because of what he said when he left wrestling. But I totally get it now. Um, I wish him the best in UFC. I know he's training really hard. I watched the little um, CM Punk documentary thing. I know he's really happy. Him and uh, AJ. I know they're really happy and everything. It's like, hey, you know, good, good for him. You know, he, he did something. He's doing something that makes him happy. But at this point in the game, chanting CM Punk basically just literally makes you all look like a bunch of idiots. Oh, absolutely. Because what what are you going, what are you accomplishing doing that? We're letting them know that we want Punk back. Punk doesn't want to come back. No, Punk he doesn't care. People. He doesn't care about you guys. Oh. Like, and that's not me saying, like, I, I, okay, I'm sure if you run into CM Punk on the street, he'd, he'd talk to you still and yeah. be cool, whatever. But like, at the end of the day, he's just like, Hey, I don't care about what you guys want. I'm doing this for me. I want to be happy. Mm-hmm. And he deserves to be happy. So the fact that you guys are all still doing that, it, it's just, it it doesn't make any sense. Chant for guys on the friggin' roster. Then you say, oh, well, we chant if you Damian Sandow. Okay. Damian Sandow, phenomenal talent. Um, From what I heard on when he was on Talkers Jericho after he got released, he asked for some time off. That's probably why they released him. Because they were like, well, how about we just release you from your contract you go do what you want to do and we'll see you later catch you down the road and you know and he seemed pretty cool with it he goes to tna um but that's that's another story um so y'all saying oh well training for guys in the roster ain't gonna do anything training for someone like heath slater will do something let me tell you why because you got someone like heath slater who he's a good worker he can talk. He's got a good character. He's got a hilarious gimmick going right now. Mm-hmm. I heard y'all need a new, like, whatever. I was going to make one of those Heath Slater memes and, like, put it up like, yo, I heard you need a new member of the wrestling panel or something, you know. But, like, I'm just like, damn, like, chant for Heath Slater because Heath Slater, he's been around. Yep. Everyone seems to like Heath Slater. I feel like that's why he's still around. Oh, yeah. He's a family guy. Like, just... Chant for guys like Heath Slater. Don't chant for guys like CM Punk. Chant for guys like Neville. Yeah. Don't chant for CM Punk. Chant for guys like freaking uh, had freaking chant for American Alpha. Chant for Enzo and Cash. Chant for Gold Dust. Our anyone, truth. anyone. Because even though they may not come out that night, knowing that the fans are into them, that they want them, you'll get the TV time for them. Absolutely. But the guy CM Punk is contracted with the UFC. You morons. I know Brock was one too, but no, CM Punk doesn't want to come back. Yeah. They don't want him back. Shut up. 
Brooklyn it's just, and Philly, shut up. Yeah, it's just it's, it's getting to the point now where it's just it's so old and it's not like it, it was never funny as far as I'm concerned. No. And it's just the point now where it just it ruins the moment. Something cool is going on. All of a sudden, CM Punk, CM Punk. It's like, why? Why is this a thing? I'm sure even freaking CM Punk would be watching. He'd just be like, why are they chanting my name? It's like Snow Cold with the what chants. Yeah. He's just like, he said it. I heard him say it on the podcast. He's just like, man, those what chants are like, you know, it's cool when I'm in there. Other people. But he's like, it's a pain in the ass. Why are you chanting one at this person? They're trying to Talk. talk to you. They're trying to give you everything they got. And you're just disrespecting them. And it comes down to what I've said tons of times before. Where I feel like so many wrestling fans just don't respect the product. And they don't respect the wrestlers. And they should. And I don't care if you disagree with me. If you're one of those idiots who do that, you're wrong. Well, it's like what I said at the beginning. They're not fans. They're viewers. Yes, they're viewers of the wrestling product. Yeah, I'm an occasional viewer. And then they'll go on the internet and talk crap. Like, no, that, that that doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, TJ, you talk about wrestling on the internet. Okay, listen. I have this podcast, right, which you can catch every Thursday and Sunday, right here on either SoundCloud, YouTube, or iTunes. <laughs> follow me on Facebook at The Harder Show. You can follow me on Twitter at The Harder Show, and of course, Instagram, and of course, you can add me on the Snapchat at Terrence James Harder. Thank you. Uh, quick plugs in there. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, I talk wrestling once in a while. I don't only talk wrestling, but y- you've heard me say a bunch of times in the podcast today, I loved this. I like this. I want the wrestlers to be safe. Mm-hmm. I want the fans to respect what's going on in the ring. Is it too much to ask to want fans when there is a wrestling match going on to just like watch the match? Yeah, shut up and just Why are it. you paying money? And I mean like Good. money, <laughs> like a couple hundred dollars to sit front row in a stupid costume and try and take the attention away from what's going on. Yeah. <clears throat> like when you pay your ticket, you're really entitled to say and do whatever you want. That's your right, but you shouldn't have that right. You, you should. Yeah. You should. Well, this is, you should have the right. Oh, they shouldn't have. You should have the res- This is this thing. Respect. You should have enough respect for these men and women who go into this ring and literally put their bodies and their lives on the line to literally do one thing, to entertain you. Yep. And instead, you bitch and compl- uh, <clears throat> you complain. I got to say that word. Don't even cut it, kid. You know it's true. You bitch and you <clears throat> complain. And all we can say is there's a reason why wrestlers get reckless. And they don't want to be. They want to be aggressive. They want to give the high points you so not deserve. And that's why this, this stuff happens. Yes. Something as simple as, oh, I, I saw a kid was saying, um, I think it was on Twitter. Um, I'm not going to like shout the handle or anything like that. That's, that's not what I, I'm about. But uh, he literally was like, LOL at that horrible boss from Sasha and Charlotte. Like, what a joke. Hashtag learn to wrestle. And I was like, do you literally, like, do you have, do you, like, I just like, I literally wanted to like message him and just be like, can you like literally just delete your Twitter? Yeah. Like, and people were favoring it. LOL, you're a savage. No, no he's, an, he's idiot. an idiot. I don't care. Like go the, in the ring, kid. You show us what you got. If get, you're some little- get in the ring and do a flat back bump. Yeah. 97% of these idiots who not, not just the people who talk, crap about it on the internet and stuff but also people who just who hate on it oh that stupid fake stuff 97% of them not all of them but a solid 97% they would get in there and take one flat back bump and they're done and they would go screw this I'm out you know, you know what I want for them what I pray and I wish it was possible if we can go back in time make it happen all these people put them in the heart dungeon and just let it all Yeah, 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 no, not Farouk. I didn't uh, say Farouk. Not, no, not some guy who can't I, talk. I, 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 I can't do Stu. Stu had that accent. He had that thick 
accent. I can't do Stu. But that's like just let Stu, the Anvil, Brett, all yeah, the Bulldog, just, let them put you in a few holes and teach you what friggin' the let business Stu, is all about. Let me come to. Okay, here, here's a thing. Here's my thing. Any, anytime someone talks crap about wrestling, depending on who the person is, I had a, a guy I work with. He was all oh, that stupid fake stuff. How uh, you like that stuff? Like, all that stuff is so fake and none of it hurts. I said, listen, brother, maybe you're right. May I show you something? Now, I didn't do that famous gif where the guy body slams the, the interviewer. I didn't do that. <laughs> I wanted to, but I was like, can I show you a hold? Or is it like an arm bar or something? No, it's a legit, like a professional wrestling hold. Well, the arm bars. Okay. Legit. But like, you, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, arm bars hold. can clearly, they look like they hurt. And I said, I'm going to show you this move. It is a legit nerve hold, oh. but like it's mostly known as a gimmicky. Oh, oh. And that move is the claw. By a couple different people. Oh, we know it. It's the Texas tornado. The claw. We everybody loved it. Was guy. done by one man. No. One man named Killer Kowalski. What? Yes. You want to watch someone get locked in the claw? You watch Killer Kowalski do it. I remember seeing pictures of him just with that massive hand holding it like just, oh. But the, the point I'm getting at here is, is there's this young guy. The Texas Tornado did a phenomenal claw. Yeah, no, I so just I, like to say that. I know how you looked at me because you know I believe in the tornado. He had the best yep. claw. He's, but And that's fine. But Kowalski had that bear mitt that used to yes. just... Yes. I mean, so did so did the Texas Tornado. But Kowalski was a Kowalski's gorilla crap. I mean, come on, you can't. Would you like to explain the claw so people don't... For, hey, maybe there's someone out there that doesn't know. Okay, so so basically, the, what the claw hold is, um, it, take your take your hand, folks, and hold it in front of you, um, looking at the palm of your hand. And what it is is your pinky finger, your index finger, and your thumb. And you're gonna bas- take your whole hand essentially and put it right on your forehead with your pinky, your thumb, and your index finger, kind of pressing down in a way. Now, where it should be pressing down. If you know anything about how to get rid of headaches or pressure points or anything on your head and your forehead, there's two right at the side of your head, right kind of above like kind of the corner of your eyebrows. The temples. Yeah, the temples. And then one right at kind of the top of your head. So your pinky, your thumb, and your index finger are going to rest on those spots. They're all sitting in a triangle yes, formation. Yes, in I'm a triangle at, formation. I'm looking at TJ this now. I'm so doing it to myself. Your thumb and your pinky are on your two side temples, yes. and the middle or your pointer is on the top. Yeah, now you can press down with all of your fingers, but those are the three that matter. And then, so basically all you're going to do is start squeezing. Now I'm doing it to myself, and this really, really hurts. Um, yeah, that causes a headache. If you can recall, wow. Mr. Ryan Wood... <laughs> Why did you oh, do that to yeah. yourself? I locked you in it. Do you remember this day? Yeah, because I remember I, I said it was a stupid submission hole. It had no business going against the figure four and the sharpshooter, and then I tapped out probably within two seconds. Yes. Because if you have a big enough hand to fit those fingers in the right spot and you squeeze, I don't care who you are, you will eventually, you will eventually tap. That's it. You are not surviving the mm-hmm. hole. You will tap. That's the thing is you're hitting all the right spots. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, it's a PG rated show here today, Ryan. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay. So anyway, so this poor guy I worked with, I use that term worked with loosely because he didn't do anything. And he's an idiot. He's not poor. He's stupid. Yeah. yeah. So he said, oh, that's wrestling stupid. I said, can I show you something? And I I, I looked at my hand. I said, okay, I got to lock him in a hold. I was thinking of locking him in a sleeper or something, but I'm like, that's obvious. Yeah. So I'm like, I thought of like the gimme, the gimmickiest move. There's two I could think of. The iron claw, the claw, yeah, or the mandible claw. Now, the mandible claw is just mean and it's because the, the legit, real mandible claw will. You are in ten different kinds of pain when you're locked in that the legit that legit nerve hold. Yep. Those of you who don't know what the mandible claw is, <laughs> look up what mankind used to do and yes. multiply it by ten. Now, mankind. The old mankind, not Mr. Socko mandible claw, the legit mandible claw. Basically, all you do is you take your middle finger and your ring finger and stick it in under your tongue and start poking around in there. Doesn't feel very good, does it? Poke around under your chin area, kind of above your lyrics. That doesn't feel very good, does it? Imagine someone pushing on that with all their might. That's the mandible claw. So anyway, I decide I'm going to lock this kid in in the... uh, 
in the Iron Claw. I'd like to say real quickly, this was not when I was recently working at this lo- at my current job. This was my old job. Yeah, we're not going to say this location either. Yes, but um, <laughs> just for you know, for the reasons of legal reasons oh, and so forth. Oh gosh, so many legal um, reasons. Oh man. So I go, are you okay with me putting you in this hole? He said, yeah, it's not going to hurt. So I explained to him the hold, and he laughed. And when I tell you I put him in this hold, I gave it everything I got. He went down to one knee. I was up squeezing down as hard as I could. And he was in tears like he couldn't. I mean, I felt horrible afterwards. He was okay within like five minutes. He was okay. But like, he was like, ah, ah. I was like, oh. like, I just said he was okay. Cause it's like, yeah, his funeral sucked the next day. <laughs> yeah. But he was all right. Um, but yeah, no, it, uh, and from that moment forward, he was like, okay. Yeah. Cause people don't understand these moves. Yes. They are all designed to make sure that you don't kill somebody. No one in their right mind is taking a tombstone, how it's supposed to be designed. Yes. But if you say these moves are fake, not only will I show you a couple of matches, one being the Hell in a Cell match we talked earlier, Mankind and uh, Undertaker, one of the most iconic matches you'll yep. ever watch, or the first ever TLC. Yes. You think that crap is fake? Then I'm going to ask you for one move, and it's for a wrestler that we both really enjoy. I will ask you to let me put on a full DDT by Jake the Snake Roberts. Let me grab your head and just fall backwards with it in my armpit and smash your head head first onto the floor. Yeah, now I'm going to try to make sure you don't go fully in so you don't die because hey, it's wrestling. It's fake. I got to make it look good. But you're probably going to get hurt. And if you're like, oh, well, that's too extreme a move, I would then let me put you in a simple power slam. If you're a small enough guy to put you on my shoulder and drop Absolutely. you, I don't care who you are. It's gonna Your back's going to feel it. Don't be a hero. Don't be tough. Don't think this is all super fake. It's scripted. That's what people need to know about wrestling. It is scripted. I had one idiot try to tell me, well, you know, they're all actors, all this and that. It's still fake. What do actors do? They got to make stuff look real. That's why you, when you look at some actors, they go through their own stunts. It hurts. They go through their own problems. Mm-hmm. But don't tell me if you jump off a ladder, a turnbuckle, take a bump from a 400-pound-plus man jumping on you, you are feeling it. Go to hell if you think otherwise. Not to mention actors do have stunt doubles. Yeah. Wrestlers don't have stunt doubles. They got to take every bit of abuse. Yes. It's scripted pain. Scripted pain. I like that. But uh, kind of kind of getting off that here. I uh, went on a nice little, uh, little segue. Segway city, what bitch. Were, what were we talking about? Summer we were talking Slam? about SummerSlam a little bit. Um, <laughs> and we went off about how much we hate wrestling fans. I, I, I need to say this. Uh, wrestling fans of, of the world, I don't hate you per se. Just a vocal minority of you greatly angers me, and you need to take a long, hard look at yourselves and think to yourselves, why am I doing this? If I can only say horrible things about the product, why am I watching it? That's all I have to say, folks. Just just keep thinking of that. If you can't respect the wrestlers and what they do and understand that they really are putting their bodies and lives on the line to entertain you, and you don't respect that, then just turn it off. Go find something else to watch. There's lots of other stuff to watch, guys. That's all I have to say about that. We're going to get off it because we're going to talk about... Uh, um, uh, actually, we still have like four matches left here. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the Good Brothers. Yep. Versus uh, the New Day featuring Jon Stewart. True. Um, don't like either team, so I'm done. <laughs> now, okay, now, no, the good, now the Good Brothers. No, I don't want to do it. That's Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson. I'll talk about it then. Okay, because I don't want to do it. Um... I love Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. They can literally do no wrong in my books because right, I love. Oh, I'm I stopped. love. Okay, now stop. Let no, me finish. Do you remember the doctor thing that they just did? Okay, that was, a, that was a little weird. New but Japan Wrestling wanted to just it was like, still take them off the history funny books. though. No, they were stupid. They refer to themselves as do- and then only the heel commentator calls them Doctor Gallows and Doctor Anderson. I mean, it was funny. Yes, the whole like pickled egg thing was really stupid. But the whole doctor, like I, I get it. they made something that was legit that happened into a work, and it was funny that they did that. They shouldn't be a work. That's your brute strength tag team, and they're making them goofy. Well, I don't want to see Gallows heavy, and Anderson heavy, goofy. But like, I that's think them I though. Up, I can beat up Carl Anderson if he's gonna pull this stuff. Try it. He's a try bug. it and see what happens. He's a bug. And then when he has you locked in a pretzel tapping out, you're gonna be like, oh my god, this guy is legit. 
Well, of course he's legit. He's a, they're a great tag team, but they don't need to be doing this goofy crap. Don't do what the New Day did. Just be those tough, stern guys that you need to be. But that's what every big guy tag team is. No, they are. look at Enzo and Cass. Cass isn't a big Cass, goofy idiot. And he knows Enzo is also not a big tough guy. Oh. APA. Um, We're not the goofy. Ascension. Exactly. The, like, like I, I can't think of any more tag teams right now for some reason. They're LOD. big guys. LOD. Like, those aren't... You wouldn't hear them crack. Okay, well, I guess I guess the the, the APA would kind of did. You know, they had their door that you had to open to come in their office, and that was great stuff. But like, look at you demolition. There's your prime yeah. example. No goofiness happening there. But like, Carl Anderson and Luke Ellis, they can get away with doing stuff like that. The thing is, what we need from this from them, they need to still show dominance. Their aggression in there. I think that's where you're getting away from because you really liked them when they first came in, eh. and then they've started to kind of be a little goofy and. Lose a lot of matches. Yeah. And I, I feel like eventually they're going to have to either... Um, WWE's either going to have to go, okay, we need to show these guys just literally... Well, that's, that's kind of what happened with the Dudleys. Yeah, They did get a lot of heat from doing that. They just beat the crap out of the Dudleys before they left. Um, so it's kind of like, ah, it kind of sucks for the Dudleys, but Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, they, you know, they did that. And I love Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows be goofy, but when it's time to go, they need to go. And did they? To my opinion, why I didn't care about this match, I didn't see them go because Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, I don't like the New Day. I'm not a fan of their gimmick, but I will not no, say No, really? Not you. Yeah, but I will not say that they're non-talented wrestlers. Much as I joke, but they're phenomenal in the ring. Yes. But if Xavier, you guys... So I don't mean to cut you off, no, no. but just for any of you who may be listening into the Hotter Show for the first time and has, the first time hanging out with us here in the Ryan Wood talk about the New Day, uh, go back and listen to the past uh, Hotter Show wrestling <laughs> episodes. There's tons of them. Yeah. Um, and you'll hear Ryan talk about the New Day. I think they're tools. I think they're very... <laughs> This comes right back in. I think they're tools. <laughs> I mean, they're they're talented guys, but they're not a tag team who should have the belts for a year. And la- and on Sunday, that would mark their title defense for yeah. one full year. My thing with that match, Xavier and Kofi, you look great. You did a good job because Xavier stepped up when Biggie. Yeah, absolutely. And he did a great job. Luke Gallows and Anderson should not be whipped around like government mules by yeah. Xavier Woods and Kofi, even though they took control at the end. They did not look like tough powerhouses against those two. I mean, at the end they did. And then Big E coming in and just squashing the whole thing was kind of... Was good. Yeah, but that was a little weird. It was, yeah. I mean, Big E's a big guy. He, he needed, to, to, come, he needed to come back and he needed to look good. He needed to get his comeuppance on mm-hmm. the good brothers. Yep, but, the good brothers. Well, because I'm, Im- I'm trying to imitate uh, Finn when I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's listen to the Good Brothers. Yeah. I can't do an Irish accent, but uh, I shouldn't be too mad at the match. I guess my whole thing. Why the heck is John Stewart still around? Why? Why is John Stewart? I mean, he must like the guys must love him or something. He's a funny guy. He's he's a nice dude. He does so much for the world, but wrestling's not your thing, man. I mean, it was really funny when they were about to grab him and he tucked in his shirt. That made me laugh because I was like. <laughs> Because the thing is, is, John's game to like take bumps and stuff. Yep. So those are the celebrity appearances I'll, I'll like. I like because he's game to do stuff. You know, you know, just real quick here, segueing, segue city bitch. My favorite celebrity appearance. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. I feel like a douche because I love him as an actor. But um, you know the show Arrow. Yes. Oh, um, Oliver who- Queen. Um, well, I can't remember his name right oh, now. I feel like such a douche. Um. When he came into WWE, when he did that run into the ring and he like ran into the ring, he jumped over the top rope, he jumped up and jumped like jumped off. Mm. I was like, dude, he did a match. He actually did some stuff. Now there's a guy who is he's in shape, he's loved wrestling his whole life, you know, and, and he I mean he's an athletic dude. Mm-hmm. Can't take that away from the guy. You see, you watch Arrow and uh, you don't see. The guy's crazy. And that's then some of those ain't no stunt double. I tell you that right now. There's no way to stunt double. But anyway, I, I just want to say that real quick. Uh, shout out to who, the name of the actor who plays Oliver Queen and Arrow on the Arrow. I can't remember his name right now. I feel like such a jerk. <laughs> Comment. Tell us. Comment and let me know who it is because I, I feel like such a jerk. I don't remember his name right now. Don't feel like a jerk. Just know, screw you, Jon Stewart. You wrecked a good match. You had a, you had a funny spot, but you you took a, two tag teams who I don't really like. I didn't care about the match and made me care even less. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's the heel Ryan Wood. Thanks a lot. Uh, make sure, guys, if you have anything you'd like to say to the healer Ryan Wood, you can find him on Twitter. Yeah, I won't. I won't reply. I won't care about you. I'm not your friend, <laughs> but I'll listen. I'm good. At oh, that. he'll listen. listen. He's a great listener, folks. Oh, buddy, uh, ladies love him. He's a great listener. Tell me your problems while I steal your girl. <laughs> like that. Uh, that is uh, the heel RW on Twitter at the heel RW. 
Someone's gonna be like, "Yeah, man, you're you're savage." I'm like, "Oh, now I gotta kill you. <laughs> now I gotta kill you." Max Powers are gonna take you out back. All right. So moving on from the tag team match. Oh, um, thank God, because they didn't move on to wh- it quicker in SummerSlam. Oh God damn it! Shut up. Um, <laughs> now we're not gonna talk about the fact that Biggie drank freaking the pickled egg juice or whatever. We're not gonna talk about that, but. Um, next match would be uh, the World Championship match. Well, no, we're not doing that either. There was, there was, there was something we got to talk about. Okay. Something big. Something big. Who's the number one contendership? Who's the number one contender for the tag titles? See how there was a big pause. No one cares. Now let's go on to the next match. Yeah, fair enough. Actually, uh, I, I, I guess um, probably Gallows and Anderson. Probably, I would assume Gallows and Anderson are. Um, I mean, they they did they technically be. win. I want. I do want to see the New Day get dethroned by a good solid heel tag team, which is Gallows and Anderson. Yeah, just you know, that's your not so goofy. Clash of champions. There better be a new tag team. Champions. Yeah, I, I'll be surprised if there isn't. But moving on, because we are, we do talk about this match as much as no. you're not going to want to talk about it. We're going to talk about no, it can't, anyway. Can't. We got divas. We got to Dean about. Ambrose. We yeah. t- women. We have to talk about. We have Dean Ambrose <laughs> versus Dolph Ziggler for. the World Heavyweight Championship. Sorry, the World Championship. Excuse me. They dropped the heavyweight, which <laughs> I do I do kind of like that because I get why they did it. I get, yeah, because then anybody can go for the belt. Exactly. So I'm game for that. That's cool. Whatever. But just, yeah. So, DNA Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler. Um, it was what it was. Um, I, I love Dolph's work. Dolph did a good job. Dolph did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Ambrose, I mean, I, I I like Ambrose. I'm not gonna sit here and talk crap about Ambrose, but no, man, you better not talk crap about me. I got a jean jacket, I got tank top. You know what I'm saying? I had a plan, man. I'm kind of like the WWE champion. I'm from a lunatic asylum, and Dolph, you're kind of goofy looking. How's your surfer image, bra? I know I don't sound like the real Dean Ambrose, but I'm pretty dumb like him. <laughs> and I'm not knocking Dean Ambrose if you hear me talk about him. I like him. I'm a good worker. I'm Dean Ambrose, but you're a big tithead. <laughs> Some of the stuff you do now, I'm like, I don't see him as a champion anymore. The match they yeah. had at SummerSlam reminds me of a pretty good title defense on a Raw or SmackDown. And that's you said that earlier, and I, I was kind of like, I was kind of like, I don't know if I agree with that, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, it didn't feel like the build up to it with Dolph and that, like Dolph. Dolph Ziggler, as far as I'm concerned, he, he easily could have stole the show yep. if Ambrose brought his A game. It's not that he didn't bring his A game, just I don't know if the match just wasn't executed. It's a weird match when you get down to it because you got Dolph, who was an amazing athletic wrestler style guy, mm-hmm. going against Ambrose, who is brawler Ambrose. Yeah. is what he is. Uh, so, I mean, it's gonna it be, it's like Stone Cold versus, say... Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. Great match. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that you know their matches are, are what they are anytime mm-hmm. that they fought, but you know it isn't going to be as good as a match as say like Shawn Michaels versus like freaking Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels versus uh, freaking Kurt Angle or something like that or Stone Cold versus someone like Bret who yeah he's a technical wrestler but he also when he brawls it's more it's believable. Mm-hmm. So I don't want the th- people to think too. I'm not making fun of Dean. We're both not saying this was a bad match. I don't think this was your spectacular SmackDown yeah. major title it, defense it, that it needed. Yeah, to it be. just didn't feel. It was like yeah. It just I don't know. I, I I feel like I'm looking back on the match a little harsher than I think I enjoyed the match more at the time. Is looking yes. back, I'm just kind of like oh like I wanted so much more out of that match, and I think that's why I feel this way. Yeah. I wanted more out of it. I feel like I, I wanted them to have a little bit more time. You know, I, I think they went for like maybe 15 minutes. I, I wanted more. I wanted AJ Styles versus John Cena. To be that match. To be that match. And both title defenses should have been. For the major yeah. titles, I think both got hyped up a little too much. And we're going to get into that more because the next major title was hyped up way too much. But um, yeah. Dean and... Dolph, as much as I don't want to see it again, I think there's a potential for it. To uh, we'll again, see it again, probably, and it could be great. I feel like it's gonna be a because this this wasn't the first time they've wrestled, but this is the first time I think they've wrestled in a big match. Yep, and maybe they could have felt yeah. each other out. I feel like their next match is gonna be a lot better. But we so, but we talked about this earlier too. It's not happening at a backlash. Yeah, we picked our champions or our, our number one contenders. You said AJ Styles. I mean, he fits the bill perfectly. Yeah. He's, he's done the I'd most love to right see that now on the, on the roster because Cena lost. 
We're going to get into why Orton doesn't uh, need it because, you know, he lost. Uh, no, not technically lost. Oh, no, he did. Yeah, technical he did knockout. Not technical knockout. Technical yep. knockout. He lost. So he did lose. The next guy I want to see, and it would be an interesting match for the number one contendership match, Bray Wyatt versus AJ Styles. Yes. And You're I'm also a Bray for, Wyatt guy, though. A huge Bray Wyatt fan. They guy. haven't built him up at all. Makes no sense right now. It, well, Look at SmackDown's really? roster. Yeah, he didn't. He hasn't been built. When up, you say that, I agree. when you say that, I go yes. You're right on that. It's just as far as building up on that, but yeah. Um, but we're kind of going to move on from this match. Not really much else I have left to say. Yeah. Um, I it was it was a and like I said, it was for a my, solid match. For my description of it, it's a solid Raw or SmackDown title defense. Mm-hmm. Um. So the next match we're going to talk about is the uh, the six woman tag team match between the faces. Uh, Becky Lynch, Naomi, and Carmella mm-hmm. uh, versus the heels, Natalia, Alexa Bliss, and a returning Nikki Bella. What? Nikki Bella returned? TJ, tell us why she returned and what happened to Eva Marie. So, Eva Marie. <laughs> tell us about the promo. Can, can, can I just say, her new gimmick, it, it, it's pretty great. <laughs> as far as just getting heat. Oh, she's- At first, I, I I didn't agree with it because I went okay. Like he, here's this friggin' wrestler who, she, you know, she's got kind of a bad rap because she wasn't that great when she first came in. No. She got a personal trainer to basically help teach her how to wrestle and all this other stuff. And she's kind of weird with fans, I guess, and that kind of thing. But she made a lot more gains and took strides to become better. Than Absolutely. A lot more people did. And people don't give her enough credit in that sense. Yes, she is still green. She still needs a lot of work, but she's taking more strides than a lot of other competitors and NXT yeah. and the, the developmental stage. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So she's improving a lot more, and that's kind of the point we're getting at here. Um, but still, she has a lot of heat with the fans. Mm-hmm. So giving her this entrance where the voice comes over, and I can't repeat what he says, but I'm telling you, like gold. When I first saw it, I thought it was stupid. And then I realized it worked on me. She got heat with me instantly. But she got she's got a problem. If you guys don't know, Eva Marie, as well as two other superstars, Paige and Del Rio, have now uh, violated the wellness policy and are gone thirty days. Yes, both all three of them for their first time. So Eva Marie, if you don't mind, am I allowed to say what the said on the Titan Tron? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, okay, so this guy comes on. And basically says Eva Marie will not be in this match. After they tried to announce her and gave her the, her anthem came on, everybody's like, "She's suspended. What is she doing here?" Eva Marie will not be attending uh, due to uh, like she's high a, stress from dealing with fans, fans and exhaustion. She, yeah, she will be relaxing and recuperating in like the Bahamas or something. Yep. And I'm like, that is beautiful. K- kind of a, a bit of a stab at her, I guess. Oh, it was a stab, um, but it was still like it was in the context of like. If I was even Marie, I'd be like, okay, like you guys should have done that. That makes sense because now she's written off television for a while. Yep. And it's and it works. It builds her character when she comes back. She'll just be like, you know, have her come out and stretch a little bit, maybe do a little yawn or something, and just be Cut like, with you just yeah. Oh, and it's great. But with that all being said, who's the third woman going to be in the match? Fourth. There's four girls. It's an eight man tag. Alexa Bliss, Natalia Hart. Um, you know, th- it's times like this yeah. where I love the fact that I have the thing right in front of me and I know you're wrong. And we don't use it. No, you're, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. It was three, six. It was a six woman tag match. I thought it was an eight. I, I don't no. know why I was thinking it was eight. What do you see? See, this is, this is, see, it's moments like this when I just, I, I, I live for these little moments because I'm never right about anything no. in my life. You tuck me so, on. So, so when I, when I, I'm like, no, you're wrong. And I know you're wrong. You put me in a schoolboy. I overshot my hand. You schoolboyed me in for the win. Yeah, that's it, buddy. And now I'm the champion of the world. Um, anyway, um, it was a six woman tag match, just for the record, as I was saying. Yep. So who, who's going to be the third woman on the heel team? Let's not pretend it was a question. We all knew who it was. I knew who it was. Yeah, we all knew who it was. She, the I, only I th- other woman who's coming back. From yeah, the but like, I, I think there was a lot of fans who genuinely didn't know if she was going to be back. I mean, she had a career-threatening injury. She came back. She got a little bit of a pop, which was surprising to me. I went, wow. 
It's cool. Welcome back, Nikki. She came in and she kicked ass. Nikki Bella she did good. great. She looked great. Like she she moved well in the ring. Like she looks like she's definitely put some work in as far as um, all that. I mean, everyone in this match looked good aside from one person. And this breaks my heart to say, and I know you said earlier, you do yeah. agree with me, and that was old Natty Hart. In the sense, because I don't know if at this point it's she's getting older, getting rustier, call it what you want, but I don't think she, in this match, which is nice, she didn't need to shine. You and ha- that is kind of the point. This match was more for Nikki's comeback and then for, like, say, definitely Carmella got some got some. Got it. Her gimmick in. looks nice. Yeah. It's a lot better. She's still got the little, you know, the shake in the booty. She uses her butt a lot. Um, Carmella. Good performance. She not jobbed out. She took a lot of licks. She took a lot of bumps. Good for her. Mm-hmm. She put the work in. She she got after it. Yep. Becky her and went. her and Alexa really got after it this yeah, match. I was it. really impressed with them. I mean, I like Alexa Bliss. I think she's um, wonderful. I, I I like her gimmick. I think she's yeah. She's a your typical blonde female wrestler, but you know, she's different too. You know who she reminds me of? She's the heel version of Kelly Kelly. I I, I yeah. Except for she can green around the edges still. Re- I I, I, I see. I disagree became, with that. Kelly Kelly became good around. Uh, she became near the end. okay at best. She could she could okay. wrestle near the end. Oh, okay. her Do you remember finish that was a face buster. So it was X Pac, and nobody cared about Okay, that. listen, X-Pac we're not getting into this. We're not getting into this. Yeah, we're thought. not getting into this right now. No, I we're not getting yeah, into this. Bron- Shut up. Oh, go Bronco Buster, someone you wank. <laughs> Shut up. So <laughs> don't make me tear my asshole. No, but Alexa Bliss, she, she just did good. Becky Lynch <laughs> looked good. See what I just said? <laughs> no, I'm trying to ignore don't it. Don't make me tear my asshole. No, no, I'm trying to ignore it. Poor X Pac. T- that was a horrible ter- thing for That him. was a horrible thing to go through, man. I, I, our, uh, shout, shout out to X Pac. Mr. Sean Waltman, if you're listening, um, come on the podcast. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I mean, back it, to the it, match. Would, it would only ruin our podcast. Oh, sh- will you shut up? No, screw him. But For, okay, hang on a no, second. No, 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 our, no, no don't, our, do our don't, do don't do it. Our podcast. Our podcast. No, I'm taking it over. NXT Takeover. RW. <laughs> NXT Takeover. The hardest show would. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the, the women. Again, this was a good match because they showed that these girls can put on a show. Yeah. Natty didn't really have to. Even Becky, she. She was back. Yeah, she did good. Like, but like, she kind of let Naomi and Carmella kind of do most of the work, and that's yeah. what I think needed to happen in this match. Because they need to start shining yeah. a little bit more. They don't have a title right now, so they need to take every opportunity to. Well, now they them. do, but do they? <laughs> but like the look he just gave me when he said "but do they" was classic. But um, you guys, let me know what you think of the new titles, uh, as far as in the comments and stuff. I, I'd like to know your guys' opinions on them. Personally, you know, the tag belts look okay. The women's title, I mean, it, it could look worse, but I feel like each brand needs their own thing. It needs to be more unique to the brand. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I, I saw someone say, well, like, what else are they supposed to do? They want everyone to kind of be on an equal playing field. Yeah. What are they going to be? Oh, yeah, we have our women's championship over here. Then we have our divas championship over here. That's insulting. Oh, yeah. So... You know, are they going to make a new name? Oh, it's the female championship. Like, can you imagine what they could have done? The female universal title. Oh, I would have shot myself. I would have quit wrestling. Uh, I want to quit the business. Yep, done. You exposed it. Yes. So, um, the heels did go over in this match, of course, with Nikki Bella hitting my finish. I got heat with her for that. Big heat. Um, not a fan with the fact that she stole my finish, but... Uh, she stole Big E's finish. She stole my finish. Nobody cared about your finish. The throwout cutter... The Hawaiian it, Smasher it was not a cutter. The TKO. You don't even know what a cutter is. You're a is my finish. You don't know what a I is. claimed it years ago. Her shoulder went into the guy's chest. How the heck is that a freaking cutter? It was a terrible cutter. It wasn't a but cutter. It was still a cutter. You're a the cutter. maneuver she tried to hit. Okay, I shouldn't be so hard on her. I'm just mad she stole <laughs> yeah, my you finish. Should. But <laughs> it yeah, was a pretty. I mean, it's the first time she's ever used it. Who, who'd she hit it on? I don't even remember. Uh, Carmella. Okay, so there's no excuse. She should have been able to hit that. Oh, get, like, give me a break. Carmella weighs like 90 pounds. She should have been able to hit her with that. Come on. I it did like... It, do, it doesn't need to be a cutter. If it looked like a cutter, I'd be like, Nikki, that doesn't make sense. The fact that it was the shoulder going into the chest and just kind of dropping... Yeah, but it was it supposed better. to be a cutter. Did you ask her? Yes. Did actually, I called her because I, I had legal issues with WB. No, I had to didn't. call them up. You called Bruce. I said, that is, my, that is my finish. No. You stole it from me. No. We're going to get off this match here because we're going to go for another 20 minutes about it. But at the end of the day... Can I ask you one question about the match? Oh, sure. Who do you think Nikki was trying to impress? John Cena or Dolph Ziggler? (sighs) Yeah. Probably Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, that's all I can do. (laughs) 
Uh, starting heat between uh, John and Dolph here. I'm oh, there's talking. already heat, and I don't care. Oh, there's heat there. There's no way there's not heat. No. So anyway, at the end of the day, it was a great, uh, great tag team match. We're gonna move on here though uh, to uh, what sh- probably should have been our main event, but uh, that's what it is. <laughs> should have been the friggin' match of the year. I would have almost said this match is match of the year ca- qualities. It could have been the candidate for it. And unfortunately, it wasn't even like that close. Now, I will say this: what Mick Foley said and what Seth Rollins said after the match, when Seth was basically just like. It doesn't matter what the title looks like. It's the fact that we're fighting for it. You really let me down tonight, Brooklyn. I do agree because can someone please explain to me why when there is a championship, the brand's championship match, even if it's not that world championship, it's the universe or whatever the hell, why is no one care and why is no one paying attention? And they're chanting stupid stuff and just, I'm like, yo, you got Finn Balor who is... Who everybody wanted. Up yes, the the everyone roster. wanted him in this match. This match got so much hype, almost too much hype. Yeah, I would say too much hype. And then it happened, and just the fans just didn't care, and it sucked the energy out of that building. Sure did. It really did. Even for us, I'm watching, going, that was an amazing thing that just happened, and no one cared. It almost felt like a toilet match a little bit. Yeah, that a lot of people left to go to the bathroom. And and, and I'm like, what? Like. I don't like, and that's the thing is that's 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 the internet fans and that's the casual fans like they just don't freaking know what they're missing. And like like when Finn when they hit that buckle bomb on the outside, mm-hmm. and you know Finn pops his shoulder back in, which unfortunately probably was what tore it. But I'm not a doctor; I have no idea. But to me, that probably was not a wise decision. Mm, but not. that's Finn Balor. I'm sure the doctor said, Finn, we need to stop the match. And he went, go F yourselves and popped it back in because he's Finn Balor. Um, and, you know, they had, they had a great match. Yeah. Um, it was really cool to see Seth bust out the uh, the small package driver. That was cool. That was sick. I, I wouldn't mind him using that as his finish from now on instead of the pedigree. Wouldn't mind too much. Even a, like a, a good signature or just a devastating mm-hmm. move for him to use more often. Absolutely. I feel like we're going to see that now. Yeah. But against someone like Balor, like because like you know you it knew Balor great. could take that amazing. He mm-hmm. made that look great. Um, and you know Finn got all his stuff in too. So it was all great. You know, of course, unfortunately now the match is kind of tainted because we know that uh, that's it injured Balor. Um, but but something we're going to touch on briefly here. Um, people saying, and kind of one of the main focal points of this podcast so far, guys, uh, and thank you for hanging out with us and still being uh, listening and really appreciate that. Um, recklessness on the part of one Seth Rollins. Yeah. A lot of people are tearing him to shreds right now, saying this is not the first time he's hurt some a big star. Yep. He's doing this on purpose, blah, 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 blah. Now, y'all need to calm down a little bit, I think, but... He's not Jack Swagger. Oh, he doesn't, shit. He doesn't go out and purposely try to hurt oh people my like Wade God. Barrett. Oh, poor Wade Barrett. Seth Rollins. R.I.P. Wade Barrett. Oh, he's, I want him back. He'd be a Not great Stu player. Bennett. He's fine, but the character Wade Barrett is dead. Um, but Seth Rollins, you guys wanted him for so long. Internet fans, real fans, every single Begging person. Begging for it. He came back. Seth Rollins is getting, I think, these shirts because he wants to take leaps and bounds. He wants to step yes. over the line with guys who he knows will and Absolutely. make Absolutely. And unfortunately, there's been negative consequences. And we said, where's the line? And Seth Rollins makes you ask that question because he wants to find that line and not go over it all the time, but he wants to dance on it to make it look good. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. Balor paid the price. Yeah. Now, was it all Rollins' fault? Not really. No, absolutely you, not. You can't say that You know, it was 50-50, obviously. Rollins had control. There could have been a lot. Balor could have said, let's pick a different spot for it. Let's not do the guardrail. Let's yeah. do it on the turnbuckle. Let's do it somewhere I, else. I feel like no matter how you play it, that was just a bad spot and someone he was probably going to get hurt in that yeah. spot. I'm sure that he's done a spot like that a million times. Yeah, and Balor just probably like, has taken yeah. it a million times. But just that night, didn't work. In a big match setting like that with all this thing, I, I would have avoided a spot like that, but... Yeah. That's, That's my nice. personal opinion. Um, Seth of- Rollins, I, I, I think people calling him reckless is a little far. Was he reckless for what happened with John Cena? Slightly. Maybe he yeah. was. Do was I believe a- Bret Hart going on a tirade about it, saying that he's a dangerous worker and all this kind of stuff? I think is that's crazy. 
Is it? And that's absolutely, and that's with respect to Bret Hart. But this is where now with the fans, I don't want to listen to them and believe them. But someone like Bret Hart, you want to talk about a worker who's been across different absolutely. companies and has been around since. Yeah, no stuff? one can ever take that away from him. Bret knows what he's talking about. Now, does he have maybe a sore spot with Seth? We don't know. We don't know what's going on or why he decided to call mm-hmm. out Seth. But Seth Rollins has shown a lot of tactics where you want to think a guy who knows what he's talking about, whether you love or hate Bret. And I know a lot of people don't like Brett. He knows he he said that for a reason. Whether it was enough as a shot to be like Rollins, check yourself. Look at what you're doing, kid, because you're gonna injure a few more if you keep pulling this crap. And we talked about the Divas Division, or I keep wanting to call it the Divas Division, the Women's Division. It's hard to it's hard to get out of the habit. The Women's Division taking an injury, it's it stings. Seth Rollins in a division where any injury doesn't sting, it can cripple. Look when he Cripple. left. When he got yes. injured, it crippled that title reign. It rate. did. Because we were like, oh, well, Roman had to step up. Screw you. We're not going to go into that. But it hurt. Finn Balor now stepped up to be mm-hmm. your next guy in that division where he was going to either hold the title for a while and be the guy or fight with Rollins to be the guy. That's gone. The WWE doesn't have a replacement for him as we yeah. speak. Because you can't go Romans right away. I know people don't want Reigns in it, but he's busy. You cannot go Brock because Brock's got crap going on behind the scenes. Yes. And we'll get to that. Who else do you bring up? Sheamus and Cesaro. Even though they're mid-card guys, they're busy. Do you break up uh, Jericho, Jericho RKO or whatever, and do you give Kevin Owens a chance? Not even really to that. They haven't set up where they can yeah, make a good title fight. They're really, um, they're they're really up the creek right now because I don't know what they're going to do. I feel like they're probably scrambling big time right now. Oh, yeah. Now, now I just wanted just some really, really quick fantasy booking here, something personally for me. Everyone's talking about the fact that uh, that night the club was backstage. Obviously, they were hanging out. Uh, and then Balor walked by them and they were like, oh, yeah. and then he just walked away. And I was, ah. of course, he was going to walk away. But still, he just kind of gave him a smirk and, you know, yeah, acknowledge them. It, just say, what's up, boys? Yeah. Good brothers. He just walked away. Yeah. And like, you know, everyone knows the history with those guys. Everyone knows that like Carl Anderson is like Finn's like best friend. So my, here's my thing. Let's say Balor's going to be out a year. Let's say that it's that bad. As of right now, I mean, he already had surgery. Yeah. So uh, he's going to recover like he probably never has before. He's going to work really hard because he's Finn Balor. Mm -hmm. Let's just say he's out for a year. Like, let's say, like, worst case, this time next year he'll be back. Like, that's like, I'm I'm speculating because that's not going to happen. But say that's the case. You have Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. They're hanging out, they're doing their thing. Say they're not doing much. Why can't we, just for a little while, have Finn come backstage? He's hanging out. He's doing his thing. The man can talk. Yeah. Put him with the club. Why not? Put him with them. I'm not saying this needs to be a permanent run. They could make that work where Balor's just... You know, this is the Balor Club. These are my boys. These are these are my brothers. You know, it, do you turn him heel or do you turn Gallows and Anderson face? How about neither? Make him neutral. You can keep Finn being a face. And maybe once in a while he goes, boys, like you shouldn't have done that. But whatever, too sweet. You know, it's yeah. all good. But something like that, it would work. I know that's kind of an internet marky thing to say. Well, hey, but, that's why we say fantasy. Yes. Keeping Finn Balor in the product somehow as soon as he's able to even get back. Even getting back on TV, not in his sling for a segment. Get him back in as soon as possible. Because that casual fan who literally, they just found out what a Finn Balor was at SummerSlam. And now he's gone. They're just like, oh... Okay, back to someone else. Back to Rollins. That and that breaks my heart. The real fans love Finn Balor, and when he comes back, he's going to get a standing ovation. Oh yeah. I'm more talking about that casual fan. Something like that would work. Yep. Eventually, they could split ways. It could be totally a mutual thing. They just go, "Yo, Finn, so you're all better now." Well, it's been good riding with you again, brother. You know, it's too walk sweet away. and walk away. Well, if that's the case, you know. Do you do something then to add to it? So I, there, let's say Gallows and Anderson's unfortunately 
they don't win the tag belts. Yeah. Because that would have to happen. They're done with the new Yeah, day. they'd need to basically just be doing nothing. And so they, Rollins, let's say, with all this happening, uh, Clash, of, uh, Clash of Champions, he wins the Universal belt. Yeah. Next night on Raw, Luke Gallows and Anderson aren't happy about that. They want to go out and start messing with him. Yeah. That's their thing for a while. And then when it's all said and done, you could have Finn Balor sitting on the stage, just even in a cast and just like, just standing there. Yeah, just standing there. It, and it may be too soon for that. Like, that's only a month away. Yeah. We could be talking, but... Or do that on another pay per view. Do it somewhere where Seth just defended his belt. He yeah. called. He called out Balor or something, and just because like, I like that. Hey, idea. hey Balor, how's your arm? You know, yeah. just I like be, that be idea. a heel about it, yeah. and then have have the good brothers come out and go, "Yo, that's our boy." And don't, don't let them talk. Be, do not let them say. Well, a like word. no, just but like no, but like like you know what I mean though. Like yeah. they come out and just kind of go, "Yo, did he just say that?" Like make Seth say something horrible about Finn. Yeah. And Japanese wrestlers or something, and then they come out and go, "Yo, wait a minute! Like, we're Japanese. We're we were Japanese wrestlers. No, nope. it's just that's be- that's our boy." And then they get into it, and they beat the crap out of Seth Rollins as they should. Mm-hmm. And then Finn's just on the stage, just like, "That's it, done." There's the Balor Club. Good work. No. BS, no heel tactics, no who orchestrated this attack. Oh my god, Finn Balor is a heel now. Blah, 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 blah. Like, would that work too? Could be. Sure. And that's probably what WWE is going to do if they ever go that route. Yeah. Because I feel like they're never going to actually pull the pin on that because the fans expect it so much. And Balor is such a face. That yeah. You've got to have a face. I, champion. I feel like a face Balor club would surprise people more. Because when you think of the Bullet Club, they were heels. Mm-hmm. You're in the middle of a basic match. Finn Balor's doing his thing. All of a sudden, here comes the machine gun, comes out, hits someone with a cutter, and goes in the back. Why? Because he can. Yep. And then Finn just goes, all right. Hits the coup de grace, it's over. And literally, you could do that. But you could do it in a way where even when Finn comes back, he's going against Seth Rollins. Seth does a little bit of dirty tactics on him. And then all of a sudden, oh, here comes Carl Anderson. Yeah. Hits a move on him, takes off. It, and the thing is, is you can still have the two of them be goofy if that's what WWE wants. But you have Finn kind of standing there going, look at these idiots. Like, what, what, is, what are they doing? What, what is your deal? You guys are idiots. But then at the same time, like the three of them get it done in the ring. Yeah. So that's some weird, wild speculation. I guess I'm channeling my inner Brandon here. But hey, um, this all could have stemmed from what we talked about earlier. Yes. There could be silver linings with potential recklessness. And Rollins, I, I, I don't really got fantasy booking for you. I don't got fantasy booking for you, Finn. Whatever happens, happens. The WWE knows how to handle their, that division very well. They have been for a while. Even with people, not even, like, even with Romans, Sheamus, hate past champions all you want. They handle the division well. Now, I, I don't know what to say. I'm worried because what if this continues to happen? I'm still hung up on the recklessness. Is it true? What will they ever go to Rollins and be like, your buckle bomb is now gone? Yeah. Because we've seen a lot. The pile driver has been knocked out. Death yes. Valley driver. And I don't find the them curb as, stomp. Curb stomp. I don't even find them as bad. Like maybe the curb stomp as well as the pile driver. Maybe I got ahead of myself, but there's a couple of band moves. I don't find super terrible. Sure. But it's like, come on, <laughs> let's think about this. The turnbuckle powerbomb is not so much reckless and dangerous as to the point it's going to always injure. There's so much uh, to execute it. You got to do this and that. It's injured two people, I believe. That move. Who was the first one? I thought with this other... I don't recall. I can't recall. I thought it caused problems, but I know what we can for sure say, Finn. It's a move now that WWE is... Like his curb stomp, as well as the yeah, pile driver. They might. Uh, These moves have injured people. That's why Randy Orton, I don't think we're ever going to see his punt again. Mm-hmm. I don't. We'll never see a pile driver ever to that extent. Because these moves are one screw up, you just know it's injury. Yeah. And that turnbuckle power bomb, Rollins, this is why I think you're getting deemed reckless. It could. It may not even be that move. It could actually be your attitude. Maybe me and TJ don't know something that's going on backstage with you. But I want to believe, as much as I don't really overly like you, and that's because you're a heel, you do okay at it, but something needs to be corrected. You cannot injure a guy like Finn and just be like, oh, it was a mistake. Was it? Into the sense where, like, do we need to evaluate something? Do we need to look and be like, 
what was the spot that did it? Do we need to look at maybe guardrail moves being lowered? We're yeah. not having high spots I think there? I think that's a... Um, why do we need to be powerbombing people into the guardrail? Why does that need to be a thing? Uh, we gotta, it we can gotta, look just as devastating getting powerbombed on the floor. Yep. That's a lot safer. So, yeah, maybe we're, Seth isn't truly reckless. And I know that's the point we try to make. With We saw stuff by doing with Charlotte that moves that they would look good but don't need to happen. Rollins, a move that he did, didn't need to happen and caused injuries. Even the, what we joked about earlier, the spear that Rusev took, he made it look great, but it didn't need to be that devastating because it still could have looked good. But him jumping into it, he put himself, not in danger, but he added more pain to the move than probably he needed to Absolutely. Take. And that, and But that's what makes these wrestlers great. I'm glad they want to go above and beyond to help the fans. But we've seen again, I'm going to say it for a third time today, that Hell in a Cell match. Those kind of things can cost a man's life. Mm-hmm. And I'm the. Well, let's talk about the what time it cost a man's life. It wasn't a reckless move on since in ring, but Owen Hart trying to go above and beyond. Trying to for do an a entrance. cool spot. And, well, not a cool spot, but just an entrance and. Cost him his life. Unfortunately, I mean, was that anyone's fault? We don't know. necessarily know, yeah. but we're not going to get into conspiracy theories no. here on the Hunter Show right now. But uh, but the point of the matter is sometimes we do want those high points. They're they're memorable. They're amazing. They Like Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. Yeah. We go, oh my God. But do we want them to do that spot and then be gone for a few months? Yeah, like the Shane McMahon. Did Shane McMahon need to jump off that Hell in a Cell? Absolutely not. He did not. No, he and really it made did. a memorable moment. But if Shane got hurt, think of the, uh, the moments we wouldn't have right now because he couldn't be our commissioner. Yeah. Or no, uh, yeah, active uh, SmackDown. Oh, he's he's the he's the GM. GM, that's what I'm thinking of. But yeah, and that's that's the theme of the night, and we have one more match to talk about where that really shined, and that is of course Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar. Um, was what it was. It was a fight. No, that's what, what we no, knew wasn't it was going to be. Brock can't have a match yeah. anymore. I don't think he just fights. He's too much of UFC background where he lost that amateur wrestling background we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, before we even did this podcast. I'm like, if he went back to that style where he became the youngest undisputed champion and looked good, I like the suplexes. I like that um, amateur style. Yeah. But this UFC crap, this is a culture that openly mocks the WWE. <clears throat> Call WWE fake all you want. We talked about what that is. UFC, you haven't broken into our our backyard and done well, but we've broken into yours and, you know, became champions. <laughs> but I, I digress and owe Brandon another 50 cents. Brock, though, I the, the suplex city thing, it's good. I'm glad you can have some background into your wrestling style. But it's, it gets boring. Mm-hmm. I watched it with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. It was good. I liked that first time. Now watching Randy Orton get suplexed around, him try to be the Viper again and try to... I, I'm not buying it. I don't buy that stuff on Brock because Brock's mm-hmm. put up an image where you need someone just as big as him to out brawl him, and it it, it puts a, a negative thing with me with him. I that match I was so tossed and turned because as you saw at the end, whether that elbow that cut uh, Randy Orton was a work, mm-hmm. whether Brock put a little I think Brock put a little too much juice into it. I think and, that's all that happened was I think it was okay. He needs to get busted open. Yeah, I just think there was a little bit too much juice behind that elbow. And we're saying juice for a reason, because if you don't know, that boy got in trouble with the UFC, because he was on something that they didn't like. I I didn't necessarily mean it like that. Oh, I did. uh, At the end of the day, um, you know, the the match, fight, whatever you want to call it, was what it was. Um, Obviously ending with Randy in a technical knockout, um, which I don't think it makes Randy look bad because it's Brock. Yeah. But, I mean, it it was a little, for me personally as a wrestling fan, it was a little uncomfortable at the end, mm-hmm. watching Randy just kind of laying there, gushing blood. Like I was like, "Do we need this?" Yeah. And he, and you know, oh, it makes Brock look even more dominant. Does Brock need to look more dominant at this point? Have you seen Brock Lesnar? He is the pure. Just, have you? He literally go. He's gonna. He he went home that night, killed like a buffalo with his bare hands, and then just ate it whole. Yeah. Like, does he need to look more dominant? We know Brock Lesnar's dominant. We get it. Um, the final attacks on Randy after it was all said and done. I'm like, oh. yeah, that was just. I mean, again, I, I get it. Yeah, but they should have rolled him out of the ring after the yeah. TKO and Brock just trying to get at him. Shane's music comes on, runs down, and then that F5. That's how they could have ended yeah. the night. But that pool of blood. Hey, I'm all for blood. 
John Cena even said it himself, it puts more intensity Absolutely. and yeah. heart into Blood the Blood has its, in the, in the right spot, it has its moments. But that time, that was a moment of recklessness, and Brock is now, I think, getting famous for it. He is someone yeah. I would, even if, let's say, I'm one of the biggest guys, I have the most experience in the business, I don't want to be in the ring with Brock. I know I'm going to be potatoed. I know I'm taking bumps that are just as hard. Vicious. Because, yeah, that he just wants to give for fun. He has no respect. I don't care who you are. If you think Brock Lesnar loves this business, think again. He's yeah. doing it for a paycheck. Unfortunately, you're correct on that. And there are so many guys, and you told me backstage, I forgot all about this, that happened. Chris Jericho Him had and to- Jericho. Now, mind you, this is all secondhand news. Yes. This is all alleged. There's been no official talk about it or anything. It's all been on the dirt sheets and everything. But basically what happened was Jericho came to the, to the gorilla after the match to basically check on Randy to see what happened because he was like, did Brock go into business for himself? Was that planned? There's no way that Randy would have allowed that. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. And he, I guess he asked Michael Hayes what happened. And Michael basically couldn't give him an answer. And he said, well, that's bullshit. I'm not going to edit that one out. I'm telling a story. <laughs> Just for the record. Swear alert. Um, and uh, he, he just said, you know, that's bullcrap. And Brock was coming back through the curtain at that exact moment. And he heard him say that. So basically, from what I understand, him and Brock got into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he got up in Brock's face. Which, I mean, Chris Jericho is a gift. Yeah. Because Chris Jericho doesn't care who you are. He's not scared of you. If this is really what happened, he was up in Brock's face, he ain't scared of Brock Lesnar. No. Now, mind you, I wouldn't want to see that fight. No, because Chris is going to lose horribly. That being said, Chris Jericho also made Goldberg look like a bitch, apparently. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, am I saying that Chris Jericho is going to beat up Brock Lesnar? Absolutely not. But I think he might put up a bit more of a fight than people think he would. It's a, that, the, that being said... Yeah, I think it was a fight verbally that needed to happen because someone Absolutely. needs to someone needed to stand up to him and Brock needs to know that there's guys in the back room that are ready to be like if you want to pull this crap we're going to beat the holy hell out of you or at least try and then we're going to make sure you're fired yeah. because you're now we joke about saying exposing the business but you're making the business look bad you brought the crap over that you did with UFC you're you're just you're a doping case waiting to happen I'm surprised you're not gone for 30 yeah. days now I'm glad which some, is interesting that he's not I think yeah. that's very interesting I'm still happy he he sells tickets for the WWE. He still helps the business. Sure, he keeps yeah. it afloat. Not by himself. Yeah, you, but like you can't take that away from Brock Lesnar, the fact that he is a draw. Yep, he's a draw. With Paul he's Heyman. A, yes, without Paul Heyman, it's not Brock. But that spot did not need to happen. I think they could have... Yeah. I'd rather have him just F5 Randy and end it. Yeah, see, like, see, I do disagree with that slightly. I think there needed to be a spot where he just... The match, I think, needed to end with Randy you know, lying in a pool of quote unquote his own blood. But a, a simple blading would have been well, you can't fine. do blading. <laughs> eh, sure you can. Yeah. Um <laughs> tell that to Randy Orton. What are they gonna do? Fire him? Uh, exactly. suspend him friggin' hey, you're gonna get a five hundred dollar fine. Yeah. Apparently Brock got a five hundred dollar fine for that. <laughs> Ooh Ooh, what do you do? Reach in his pocket and just hand him a bunch of hundreds? Yeah, exactly. Like, come on. I mean, I guess it's the principle behind it, but whatever. Just to say, yeah, we are, we're, we're putting we're consequences watching, on our guy. Yes. Um, but Who just cares? kind of finishing off the Chris Jericho uh, fiasco thing, you know, they're up in each other's faces, and I guess apparently Brock was shoved him, thus starting this altercation, and this basically. Chris was up in his face again, and apparently Brock just straight up said, you, you either better punch me or kiss me. Yeah. No, I, that's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Brock. But like, that's Brock Lesnar. Yeah. That's, come on, buddy, kiss me. Come on. Like people were saying, he like kissed Jericho on the forehead and stuff, and like that seems a little weird. But like, I think it was like, this story got a little out of hand. Yeah. Told, but, but at the I, end of the day, it had to be broken up by Triple H and then broken up by Vince McMahon. And I believe that. I believe that Jericho and a lot of other guys would be the one to approach. Absolutely. Brock and be like, who are you to hurt Randy Orton? He's one of our boys. Yeah. It's one of our guys. He's been here forever. He never left. Yeah. And he even left. if even if you hate him, if, if the whole backstage hate him, Randy is still someone who cares yeah. about the business. He's one of the boys. Doesn't matter. You know? Who the hell are you, Brock? Come on. You're better than that. You, you can be better than that. You, you can be better than that. There's no reason that Brock Lesnar can't come in, 
dominate, be an, a, a vicious guy and be a champion and all this kind of stuff and not be, you know, safe. Yeah. There's no reason. A man like that, a man of his size, he should be able, his working punch would look dominant even if he didn't even remotely connect with it. Yeah. Why does he need to be... Like that, you watch that second elbow that cracked Randy's head. Oh, I was. That's that's the pure. That was. I was just like, Randy should have been knocked out from that. Probably. I mean, kudos to Randy Orton. I mean, holy crap! He took off bomb. And you know, there's a picture of him floating around the internet with him like kind of smiling backstage. Um, like there's all these like things on there. Like all, all I said was, uh, oh, was I think it was like all I said is that China looked better in Playboy than Sable or something, something like that. Like some kind of like ah, I get it, you know. Yeah. Um, but. At the end of the day, um, we've talked about recklessness in this podcast. Um, And did that need to happen where Brock Lesnar needs to elbow Randy in the head so hard it cracked his freaking temple or whatever? No. No, and if you said said yes, then you must really hate Randy Orton to want him injured again. Because that's all that spot was for. If you wanted that to happen, you wanted Randy to either get a concussion, bleed to a point that was unnecessary, or just get generally hurt. Brock was reckless. That is what reckless looks like. Period. That period. That's it. That's all we got for that. Um, now, what do you do with Brock? It, that's the thing is, at this point, this is what always bothers me with, with Brock and stuff. And CM Punk even said this. Okay, so I'm going to lose to Brock. Yes. Brock's going to crack my head open. Yes. Is Brock, are Brock and I going to go into some kind of a program? Well, no, we're not going to see Brock until three pay-per-views from now, probably. So I'm losing to Brock. Yeah. <laughs> it's CM Punk and like The Rock again, you know. So I'm losing to The Rock, yes. Is The Rock going to be at work on Monday? I'm losing to The Undertaker, all due respect to The Undertaker. These are CM Punk's words, not mine. You know, who's going to be at work on Monday? Yeah. And he makes a, fa- um, a now, fair point. Yeah. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that Sam Punk should have won over there. Take. I'm not saying that. No. He shouldn't have won any of those Good matches, Lord, to be no. honest. No. He, and he shouldn't have, but it's, I can totally get his point. Yeah. He basically gave up a bit of his paycheck. Or in a sense, he, or sorry, not paycheck. He gave a bit of his spotlight to a person who will be leaving the next day. Yes. And I know the Rock and Taker will die for the business, but it still makes the point they should, pro- like, Taker, maybe not anymore. Brock, you can. Brock, you absolutely should. You are the epitome of fitness. Mm-hmm. I can give you that, kid. You're the UFC heavyweight champion. Your house should be there every day. If not, get out of the business. We're wasting money and contract space to deal with you. Yeah. If you hate people, you leave. Go find another gig. Go back to the UFC, you little pansy. If you think that you're the toughest thing, go back there and start whooping ass. Maybe don't dope this time. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, I don't know what you can do with him. He's on doping allegations with uh, the UFC. He isn't going to show up all the time. No. What are you going to do? Have him go back on Raw, beat up a, uh, a, the McMahons, and walk away for a year, come back, and be like, hey, Vince, you want a match? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, you, you're going to have Brock Lesnar win the championship? Hell no. I freaking hope not. You'll never see the title again. Exa- well, did it, wasn't it, remember how long it was vacant for yeah. a while? If, you're, if the main belt is not on freaking television every week, you have a problem. Brock Lesnar was that problem. Do you see a theme here, kids? Do you understand what we're coming out? Is this mic on? Brock Lesnar is reckless and a goof. He is the reason we have this conversation. Because he's a goof. A reckless tithead. And I wish I could a say... A reckless so, tithead. Oh, you know what words I want to use. You know what I want to call him. And I can't. I'm going to respect that. But Brock, leave. You're done. I'd rather see Paul Heyman go into the ring. We got a better chance of Mr. Perfect coming back and winning the title than Brock performing right at this point in time. WWE, do something about it. I went off. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Hey, I think I agree. They need, I think they need to figure out what they're going to They need to figure out Brock. They need Settle to figure them. something out. They, just, they need to just... Brock, you got to calm down. You're in a people sport. You are working with yeah. people all the time, pleasing people. How can you be in that business... And if you love hate it. People that and, much. Yeah, and hate people. That's hate, a like, joke. Hate people. I wonder if he hates his wife. Like, uh, there's. Yeah, we're not gonna sit here and start making allegations like that against one Bork Lesnar. I don't know. Um, though. I'm sure he doesn't hate Sable. God. Right, Puts up with her. 
like to yell. Like everybody somewhere. does with girls. Oh, God. All right. So with that, uh, we are going to sign off here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to myself and the heel Ryan Wood rant on about a bunch of stuff and talk a little bit about SummerSlam and wrestling fans and and recklessness and wrestling and a bunch of other stuff along the way. Hey, you know what was great about this pay-per-view? Not only it had decent matches, but it exposed a lot of problems that WWE is facing. And I'm kind of glad we got to talk about that and tell people, hey, recklessness is a thing. Hey, the fans being idiots are a thing. The WWE needs to address this somehow. Get it fixed. Absolutely. And thank you, SummerSlam, for showing us that. Absolutely. The end of the day, guys, good pay-per-view. And uh, we will uh, we will catch you guys at the next one. I'm sure I'll be joined by the heel Ryan Wood. Thank you, Ryan, for hanging out and uh, doing this with me. Really appreciate it. Xbox sucks. All right, guys, that was my chat with Ryan, the heel Ryan Wood. Uh, as you hear, I let him get away with a little uh, little insult to my man Sean Waltman X Pack at the end of it. Uh, it is all in good fun. Um, it's kind of an inside joke now for us that he 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 uh, kind of makes fun of X Pac at any given time that he's able to. <laughs> um, still don't know why. I still don't think it's funny, but whatever. He thinks it's funny, so I guess we'll go on with it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and clicking that play button on today's episode of the podcast. Really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the wrestling talk is something that I uh, thoroughly enjoy doing, especially when I'm hanging out with either uh, my man, Mr. Brandon Bowden, the producer of The Hotter Show. Shout out to him. Or, of course, uh, the heel, Ryan Wood. Now, as I mentioned in the podcast, maybe adding a, a member to the uh, the Hotter Show wrestling panel. Uh, we'll see. Um, but uh, definitely look forward to that, guys. It's been so fun hanging out with you, no matter how you've been listening, whether you're on the SoundCloud. If you're on the SoundCloud, be sure to hit that follow button and give this audio clip a like. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all the support, guys. Uh, going steadily and follow us on SoundCloud, so that is awesome. It usually always goes up first on the SoundCloud. <laughs> so so if you follow me on SoundCloud, you don't have to think about it. You just... Uh, Follow me up there, go on, and it'll be there waiting for you. Um, if you're listening on the YouTube, thank you so much for checking out the YouTube. Be sure to leave a like or dislike on this video, depending on what you thought of it. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I seriously appreciate it. All the support and everything. It's been so awesome, guys. Um, and of course, if you're listening on the iTunes, which you guys know, is the easiest way to listen to The Harder Show. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to the podcast. Once you do that, you don't have to think about it, guys. All you're going to do is turn on your device on either Thursday or Sunday. And whatever time I post it, it will be downloaded immediately to your device. You don't even have to think about it. You'll just be like, oh, harder show. Cool. And you can listen in. You can catch up. All the archives are on there as well as on the SoundCloud. I don't know that my man, Mr. Matthew Cannons, informed me today that he was uh, he was doing a bit of catch up on the harder show. Um, so that's awesome. And yeah. That's enough rambling out of me, guys. That's going to do it for me here today. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, clicking that play button. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Be sure to hit me up on all my social medias to make sure to let me know what you thought of SummerSlam and maybe some of the stuff we talked about. But until then, I will catch you guys next time on The Harder Show. Thank you.